Ever witness someone so fast on track you doubt you could ever be on their level? The mission of Advanced Motorsports is to demonstrate the speed is achievable for everyone. With the expertise of some of the best sim drivers in North America, we are set to release free content on social media and comprehensive guides on our website. For those seeking the ultimate experience, our Advanced Motorsport Institute and personalized coaching sessions are the way to go. No matter your level of experience, we invite you to follow us on our social media to learn to be fast, fast. With the Butt Kicker Gamer 2, what you see and what you hear is what you feel. Butt Kicker, the future is feeling. Tonight, the Precision Racing League and its trucks, as well as Grand National Machines, get a little bit Lone Star state-wise. In fact, they look to get wise to the potential of wildness. Here at No Limits, Texas, we're at iRacing's virtual Texas Motor Speedway to start off the night with the trucks here on Race Spot. Good evening, everyone. I'm Justin Prince. Alongside the booth tonight is Derek Watson, Joshua Lee producing as we get set to go near full throttle around the mile and a half circuit here in Fort Worth, Texas, Derek. Oh, JP, I'm excited. Get out here and do the boot scoot and boogie and see what's going to happen all night long. I know the B-roll footage is daytime, but it's a nighttime race. I'm excited here, JP. What an amazing schedule we have for the truck series here. We can take a look at the schedule. This is a great path here. It's Texas, then Dega. Dover, Kansas, Darlington. Look at that five race stretch of mile and a half, and there, or at least mile plus. And then we get to North Wilkesboro and then Charlotte to end the season. This is going to be fun. Yeah, it's been a fun season so far. Tonight could be a tricky one for your championship competitors. We'll see how they live up to the challenges, though, in the trucks. Speaking of the challengers, Patrick Calgill leading the point standing so far. It's been near perfect for him 100 points, two wins. One pole, one fastest lap. Zach Panzarella is his closest competition so far. Austin Hunter, Philip Bieber, Tanner Johnson are amongst the top five. Mike Toomer Jr. Along with Calvert, Stacey Hunter, Mike Richter, Will Jennings, your top 10 entering tonight. Team-wise, meanwhile, with drivers like Calgill doing very well, no surprise, what about Racing Speedworks, the team he represents for the championship is at the top of the standings over at DDI Motorsports 44 ever. Then Philmar Racing amongst the top five with Whataback Racing Hunters and RBM Shake in that same distinction. The other teams in the 100 point club include Big Fast Racing and Soy Boys Racing. Yes, they have been able to get into the top 10 just about. You also throw Adams Family Racing that's amongst those into said top 10 with 41 points despite just the one entry for them on the season. Now, the drivers get themselves ready here from Texas. I'd like to remind you, tonight's action is brought to you in part by Advanced Sim Racing. 
Owned and operated by Passionate Sim Racers, Advanced Sim Racing Designs, and builds the sturdiest and most durable aluminum profile racing simulation cockpits available on the market today. All PRL members also get a 5% discount on ANSAR products using the Precision 5 coupon code. Race box offers mint and high-end button boxes for sim racing enthusiasts. The casual gamer up to the most particular sim racing driver. Compelling priced and carefully handcrafted, our button boxes are an enjoyable addition to any sim racing setup. Visit raceboxsimracing.com and get a 5% discount. Use the Precision 5 coupon code. Butt Kicker products add incredible immersion and realism to every game. For every nuance and joy, put yourself in the driver's seat. Moranis is a performance lifestyle brand motivated by motorsport and founded by professional race car driver Daniel Morad. For more information, visit Moranis.com. Mr. Hedge High Racing Photography. Capture your finest, proudest, or simply worst moments from your hobby in up to 8K resolution. A great addition to any sim room. And by Advanced Motorsports. Get ready to learn to be fast. Fast with Advanced Motorsports. Follow them on their socials to become a better driver. Qualifying in its final minute currently, and there's a lengthy list of penalties to discuss. Nine different drivers not allowed to qualify tonight. Jordan Miller, Antonio Bannister, Zach Williams, Matthew Alica, Austin Hunter, Andrew Sharp, Graham Wildman, Garrett Austin, and Kyle Dewey all have to start at the tail. We also had two drivers suspended from incidents at the paperclip. Zachary Austin had two incidents of cause. That sees him not eligible to race tonight. And Evan Williams had four points to the caution count. He's been suspended for the year as a result of the incidents. Yeah, tough to see, unfortunately, when those kind of moments happen where, uh, you know, drivers have to get suspended or punished or not able to qualify. But it's going to make for a new poll, more than likely. Uh, Brad, Brandon Chatley currently up there on the poll as Q is about over in about 10 seconds here, JP. So a new, new front row could be exciting tonight. We'll see that in the next moment or so. Qualifying coming to a close. Remember, 40 minutes on the clock for tonight here from Texas. Just about all set to go racing. The drivers finish up the session. It's time to hit the grid from No Limits, Texas. Brennan Chatley starts on the pole. The first pole for him of the season. He's been starting mid-pack in the qualifying before tonight. Zach Panzarella alongside. Row two, it's Phil Beaver. Mike Richter continuing his best season yet. He'll start in the fourth. Mike Toomer Jr. good at qualifying tonight. He'll start fifth. He's alongside Stephen Kirby in the 109 machine. Seventh spot tonight. That's where your points leader lies for the first time. Not on the front row. We're in the top three. He starts seventh alongside Rodrigo Morales. Luke Davis had some rough races to start off the season. It's his best starting position, ninth. Tom Massey starts off in 10th. Jake Mackey back in the 11th position for big, fast racing. And Brett Adams from Adams Family Racing 12th. Nicholas Hunter alongside Stacy Hunter. It's a brotherly affair from 13th to 14th. Mo Jennings starts 15th alongside Tanner Johnson. Dylan Smith and Edward Peltz round up the top 18. Only two other drivers set times. Marty Calvert and Ryan Johnson. Every single driver below that point did not get to qualify due to penalties and or because they're race controlled tonight. Those drivers could do it. Gabriel Austin, Sharp, Hunter, Wildman, Alica, and Zach Williams. Take a look at the weather conditions. This is right about where the official sessions have been this week. 72, 73 degrees, the track temperature, most cloudy skies, night racing conditions, but it's also pretty gusty. One trait seen throughout the races all week in the trucks, though, Derek. Clean air is king. Clean air is king, but the drafting will be prevalent here down the straights, JP. With that cold air, you would think this track would be very, very grippy and almost tight. But in fact, the stories we're hearing up and down this roster tonight and across some of the official irises is how these trucks are going to get loose. So we're going to see a lot of weird activity tonight here across this track. So with that in mind, on top of what we just discussed, what are some of the arrow keys to victory you think tonight? Uh, making sure you use the draft effectively. While, cold, while clean air is, you know, king, as you said, making sure you stay in that draft. If you fall off the draft here at Texas while you're, you know, in the opening laps, you will be well, well behind the field. 
And then, of course, if you are the front, you need to watch where that draft is coming from. And the words of WWE Hall of Famer Justin, Snoop Dogg, got to watch your back. Today I learned Snoop Dogg is somehow in the WWE Hall of Fame. More importantly, I, 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 I teach you something every day. Bryce trucks are getting set to go 80 laps the estimated distance. That is longer than C Open this week. That's if it goes green. Brennan Shatley sets things up as the control truck. Field in the hands of Barney. We're quite happy with this third round of the season for the PRL trucks is underway from No Limits, Texas. Here we go, a spin to the inside. Phil Beaver hard to the wall, no caution. As that's well, the race leaders are side by side in the turn three, it's Zach Panzarella who takes it away. And yeah, they great. spin again. Just a great job by Philip Beaver and the others keeping these cars pointed forward. Beaver sort of used that inside wall to get the truck pointed forward and will stay at green flag racing. One lap done and Panzarella quickly to the lead here at Texas. And quickly, Mike Rector Jr. up to second. More trouble. One oh. more into the wall. Where he is still green. Three different drivers have nearly spun it or slammed a wall. At that time, it was Dylan Smith. Mike Rector, though, he's slipping, sliding on his way to the top, trying to get the clean air and fast before dirty air strikes. Speaking of striking, well, one driver struck the wall. Oh, man, that's Philip Beaver. So what's happening here, JP, and the reason why this is happening on top of being a looser setup on these vehicles is there's a, a really wicked transition out of two back to the, the quote-unquote flat part, or in this case, the banked part of the track. And that transition can cause your truck to really unsettle and to, to not, you know, move perfectly. And once that truck moves to the inside, it, it snaps in there quick. Watch this here. This will be Dylan Schmidt here. Man, it's just that transition right there. It'll surprise you. A lot of people have been doing that this week in terms of the fixed setup. We're seeing that really tonight as a result here this evening. Chatley with all that. He's back to second, but also to the middle field already. Patrick Calgill, he's up to fourth. And is already looking for third. He's already up three spots in three laps. Yeah, Patrick doing a great job. Got a new wheel this season, by the way, and is racing pretty well with it. You see him there in the 31 machine. There he is. There he is on camera. Patrick Cowgill. Got that beautiful uh, setup all around him. But yeah, got a new wheel this season. Look at how much he's fighting that wheel, though. It tells you how much activity there is here at Texas. So what happened to my old wheel? Because that wheel he replaced was my old wheel. Uh, I think he told me he had to go in for repairs. So it's currently under warranty at the at the uh, manufacturer. I mean, that's the beauty of that side. I, but that's news to me that there was a warranty on it in the first place. Anyhow, race trucks. Calgio is the third. And Kirby, Munsell stuck on the top line. One of the main keys about a track like this, do not lose the bottom in turn three. Well, not only don't lose the bottom, but you really, as I said earlier, you want to stay in this draft. You want to stay with this momentum of cars. Otherwise, they're just going to kind of freight train you by. Now, where you do want to be a little higher here is out of one and two with that transition. Typically, if you're up higher on the track, that transition's easier to manage. You saw Patrick get way wide there, and that'll help with that. And that now sets things up side by side again between the Whataback trucks. Mike Richter has been very impressive this season because last time out did solid. He did really well in the first mile and a half of the season. He has been having his best season yet. Same you can argue for Brad Adams, who's been doing well as a play. Yeah, both have been doing an amazing job here. But talk about amazing tonight, by the way. Look up at that puppy machine for Zach Panzarella up here in the lead. He uh, told me he knew he needed to get up front early. He uh, had a hard time in the official races so far to speak about having finding clean racing. I uh, seem to be caught up in someone else's mess. So he knew if he got up front, he could stay here. That's why it was important to him to qualify so well. well the top two getting about a six tenths of a second breakaway for now over Brad Adamson company. 
so far seeming to be cooperating and keeping things patient as we've discussed patience gonna be key in long run short run first 10 laps usually if that truck seems to be the mindset in officials richter nearly knocks the wall down with the move inside by kirby yeah, look at the difference here and what's causing the speed difference a little bit is the fact that Panzarella and Brandon Chatley are, are you know, eager or okay at least to race like this, just front to back. There's no passing here, no one's breaking the draft, no one's breaking the line. But then look behind them, all this side-by-side -side racing, while it's effective and while it may gain you spots, it does slow you down a little bit and allows the leaders to pull away. The average at least from what I've noticed, a tenth or two per lap if you go side by side the whole time around compared to being single file, even with dirty air. So we'll see how many times tonight drivers are able to take advantage of these types of battles. This battle in turn has opened up the gap now to seven, eight tenths nearly between first and third. Amongst those cutting their way to the field though, Andrew Sharp. You know why? He's up 12. The 24 truck is moving. Yeah, Andrew's had a really great time this season. Had a great chance to sit down and talk with Andrew today and get to know him. And what a great person. You know, only 25 years old and has done such, such great work here across iRacing and manages a very busy schedule. Look at this, by the way. We're going to talk about this all night long. But uh, Andrew has decided to show off his team socks. You're going to need to explain the context here. I'm just uh, going to say that now. We'll, we'll do it under caution, but we had a whole conversation today in Discord about Team Sock, Team Shoe, or Team Barefoot, and Andrew decided to uh, to show it off a little bit. Look at those nice socks, by the way. It's got the little, maybe you got a better term. I call it the hospital grips on the bottom. I don't even a better term for that, but that's what I think of, little hospital booties with the grips on the bottom. Uh, those are nice, like, are those like Miranda socks? I don't yeah, know those, are. those are actually Miranda socks. You see that little M on the right foot? I think that's what they call sim racing socks in this case, which are, yeah. or essentially hospital socks, but with the Miranda's logo on them. Yeah, the overpriced hospital socks is what they are. I don't say that, they are a sponsor. That's fair, they are a sponsor. Size 10 feet for Andrew Sharp, by the way, in case you're curious. Uh, so just a random fact I know about some of the drivers, but yeah, Andrew doing really well, battling on the bottom here. I think he'd be happier if he knew he could uh, probably drift out of that corner a little higher than he does. Okay, so now that you've seen how he's holding the foot to the pedal, and the pedal in turn is full oh, of thought, someone just spun on a pit road, and yet again, it's Luke Davis. It is not going well in a truck this year for the Lunatic oh, Machine. That's now three races with a problem. And that's going to be a penalty for unsafe pit entry, if not speeding. Probably both, I would think, but at least the speeding. So that'll be a long pit stop there and well off schedule. By the way, here we are. We're still green, JP. Uh, we are, you know, almost 10 minutes in and still green flag racing. We're having a possibility of that 80 flag or 80 lap run you talked about. Yeah, right now we'll see how these drivers run it down. But one thing that we're seeing, Panzarella's having a problem. He is almost so loose. He's tight, if anything, out of turn two. A big trend in officials. You need to hug the bottom. Speaking of hugging the bottom of the track, Davis didn't do that and then drifted and then slides in safe. Man, that typically the transition that happened there, you typically see it out of two, but it just sort of bit him out of four, but did a really great job overall keeping control of that truck. You know, it could have spun up the track or really in the way of people, but got a down pit road. So great job there. Here's a battle for P2, by the way as now uh, Calgill has gotten up to P3. That might be at least a little bit of a breathtaking moment for Panzarella, who is getting higher and higher on corner exit. Was that point was making Derek? Oh yeah, so tight he's loose. He did say to you he was loose in practice. He can't get to the bottom. He's drifting around and pushing so high out of two. Yeah, oh, and this time drifted it. I'm curious to see what this does for him long term, though, but by not getting all the way to the bottom, I'm curious if it will save him a little bit of tire compared to his competitors. But there's the bottom. He has a hard time sticking it. Let's see it out of the corner here. And 
does a pretty good job overall in that corner right there. And now we have our first lap traffic vehicle. Not too far ahead of Zach if we look ahead here. And of course, there he is with that daily drivers, with that puppy on the side, promoting that event they're running. By the way, a confusion in the numbers. Uh, someone came in earlier, one of the admins came in to turn some laps and took Zach's number in sim. That's why there's a difference between what his truck says and what the leaderboard says. The things that can happen in sim racing. Oh, I know, right? Also, the things that can happen in the battle for second. Patrick Calgill getting a run on Chatley. And so the Speedworks machines in the Wetterback camp swap spots. And Brett Adams says, I want that too. Unfortunately, Texas doesn't want to make it easy for him. No, you really got to be able to... And a lot of what we're seeing here already, JP, in these corners is some of these drivers are not aware of the space they have out of these corners. Brett Adams could have tracked out probably a whole, like half a track up out of that corner and got a better run off and carried more speed. But sometimes you're just not sure how close you are to someone depending upon your monitor setup. And that's what happens to you. And that's why getting the field of views very, very, very important. Especially to make sure that distance judgment, half a full truck, that difference. Kirby getting the run too. And, and the more you mention that, the more it's like, okay, can I side draft here? And a lot of drivers don't like to get close, case the door. It's so much of a distance that it's forcing Chatley to be slower bottom side on the exit. Yeah, it really is. It's, it's just forcing that to happen here and really falling back quickly. It makes me think Chatley probably burned up his tires, you know, running that bottom side because you're putting more input into the wheel holding the bottom of the track therefore you're going to burn up a little bit more of that tire and you know it's going to heat those tires up man we touch the white line and so that truck wiggle up there uh, through that corner jp already more than 20 laps into the run 55 estimated to go if we stay green so we're cruising our way to the race so far just one second of fall off which isn't a lot in the number sense but that's for your leader for those who are in the heart of the pack or who have burned up the right front like Chatley, like what we're seeing for the drivers in the teens, that is up to half an extra second of fall off a lap right now. Yeah, the fall off will be big here at Texas where, I mean, the, the laps are fast, you know, it's gonna feel like you're wide open. And here's a side-by-side -side battle back for 17th. This is Graham Wildman and Kyle Dewey. And there they go. Now, if these guys, I mean, I respect wanting to race, but stay in line a bit, guys, and see if we can catch the field. But they're just racing hard. And that's the beauty of league racing, by the way, is you may not always be racing for the win, but it feels like for the most part, you're always racing for something. And that kind of gets that adrenaline pumping. Oh, oh man, speaking of getting this pumping, oh, man. Oh, they're going to be pumping into each other here. This is for 15th. Austin Hunter, Garrett Austin getting a little bit chippy back there. And you get to the talk of the viewpoint. That's critical. Speaking of critical, race lead is on. Patrick Elgill to the inside. He wants to go three for three now. Panzarella is trying the very top. It's worked at times in officials this week. There's the reason with the run. It looks like Panzarella able to hold on for a moment, but Calgill is quicker. Yeah, Calgill is probably going to get the run here through one and two. We'll see if he manages to transition. That's way too wide for Panzarella there, it looks like. And Calgill just going to go on by. Now he'll draft. Now Panzarella will fall in line behind Calgill. So back to second position. This time goes Panzarella. Now there is a bit of context for that. We've seen that in the rear world. First couple drivers getting that to work. In open racing, only one driver out of hundreds a person we've seen so far derek have done what panzerell is trying to do run the wall use that as a ramp get the defensive line to work it doesn't work as well in the fix set no it doesn't work as well and of course you know i, I know we're not at a super speed i'm going to bring up that d word again of draft when you got three or four guys lined up on the bottom 
then it's going to work. If Panzerella could get maybe Brett Adams and uh, Stephen Kirby to line up behind him on the top line, he might have a, a hope of making that line work. But that momentum of the draft also matters a lot here at Texas for how fast this track is. There you go. He got Cal or, uh, Brett Adams, pardon me, to go up and follow him. So a little bit of help here, going to come off of two. But by staying high, what they do, and I, what I like, is they're avoiding that awful transition, or at least some of it, here at Texas. It almost seems to be working a lot better in three and four, which is kind of the inverse of the fixed and open. In open, people had more success, as it said in the sample, to turn one and two. In the fixed... And the SOF race that just happened on our racing social media platforms an hour ago, Derek, three and four worked for a couple drivers to defend. Not to pass, but to defend. So here's what I'm wondering, by the way, and this is a thought to put in your head. Panzarella is willing to run the high side, willing to use a little less tire. Calgill had to burn up a lot of equipment to get from where he started to where he is. I wonder if Panzarella is trying just to buy this time, be patient, and see if maybe he can make it some time later. Well when more tire fall holds off, and there he goes, to the bottom here through one and two. I think the point of how he was trying to play that was to send it. The problem is he nearly spins the bottom side, and now to second, Brett Adams. High side, and now it's Adams that has a chance to clear and does. As Cowgill is loose in front, he bobbles it. Brett Adams now with a chance to build the run. Oh, there we go. We saw what happens if you make a run here and it doesn't work. You can fall back a spot quickly, which is what happened to Panzarella. Still right in that high side. He is committed to that strategy, JP. Let's force him into a battle for the third spot with Kirby. These drivers are keeping solid distance to fifth on back, by the way. No inroads really from Arnie Calvert, Brennan Chatley, Mike Richter and company. They are still barely outside of the tracking distance. And Calvert, very strong so far. He's up 14 spots after the Martinsville Troubles. Yeah, Calvert having a pretty good run here. Told me he likes drifting. He kind of laughed as he said it and said, that's what I think the track will feel like tonight. So the driver of Fillmore Racing, number 16, says he likes drifting, so he felt a little bit more comfortable than some of his competitors here at Texas. See his viewpoint right there. Nicely focused in. He's amongst those with the racing gloves, too. And it's followed along with several of the pictures. Yes, people sent pictures for your discussion, too. Oh, is... yeah, we're doing we're going to do show and tell, possibly. OK, don't worry. But I promise you there is no feat. I promise you I would never let that happen because that's that's awful. The point I was going to make was racing gloves are still building up on the rise to be able to keep an extra grip to the wheel. Yeah, racing gloves are becoming more and more popular. To go back to that sponge you see on your screen there, Moradness has a lot of gloves. And listen, a lot of cool looking gloves. I'm a, I'm a flashy color, uh, you know, oh, oh, shiny kind of person. And Moradness has a lot of cool gloves. The gloves are becoming the new hot trend in sim racing. I mean... There is the argument it keeps the wheel from building moisture. It's another discussion for another time. But Andrew Sharp, he's discussing how he wants to be up front. He is the fastest truck on the track when he is not trying to make a pass right now. He's already up to seventh here. If he can get this done on Mike Richter back straight away, should be able to with a run. Yeah. You know, when I talked to Sharp, he described that this track would be it would be a tough race and loops was the, really the only word he gave me to describe what he thought, the, how the track would behave. It's just loose. And look at the slide job there. It's a classic slide job. Just pulled up Mike Richter and gets up in there. For someone who's a, who's a really known for his road racing skills, Andrew Sharp has taken the ovals like a fish to water and has done an amazing job here in a season and a half here in PRL. It was actually one of the drivers who qualified for one of the most recent iRacing special events, the Rear World Toyota GR North America series, essentially their GR Cup for the Rear World, held its first event a couple weeks ago now, Derek, in the past week, in fact. It just so happened that Sharp was one of the people in the field. Didn't have any luck whatsoever, but he was there.
And that's and that's important because a lot of people who would have tried for that event, you know, who want to be in that event, who don't have the ability and skill to get into it. So that's a, that's an endorsement of Andrew Sharp in and of itself here. But man, Panzarella is starting to fall back a little bit here. This is going to put him now back in the P3, P4 battle with uh, Stephen Kirby. Pit window was open, by the way, and Graham Wildman, he just elected to split the race in half. Here's the thing, he's the only one trying it. Drivers can go up to 50 laps, give or take, on the fuel tonight. So a massive undercut here for Wildman. And this is an interesting call. Typically, I'm a fan of being different and having a different pit strategy, but it's going to depend on where he tracks out. Listen, if he tracks out behind a group of drivers and, you know, he can get that draft and build up that speed quickly and, you know, and pass some people, maybe it works. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Here's another truck now. That is a white truck that I can't Chatley. identify. That's Chatley. Okay. So two drivers elect and go just 38, 39 laps into the fuel run here. Things are going to chip beyond the racetrack, though. If we go back to second, Brett Adams, Zach Panzarella are now having a crossover battle. This is allowing Cal Gill to gain. Now it's Adams with the chance to get served from the high side. Now wait and see who Stephen Kirby follows here. That may matter a little bit as far as who can clear who here. If Kirby, in fact, is even in that one second draft range. But man, Panzarella drifted high and sort of drove uh, Brett Adams up the track a little bit here. Now they still are side by side. I was gonna say, JP, I like that idea of splitting the race in half. I, I'm a person who I believe in, in equality on both sides of the race. So those guys who just came down pit road, they know how the truck will behave in 20 minutes, assuming we stay green. They know what to expect. They know how loose it'll be. They know how hard they can push. There's no question mark on their score sheet. Just pass crossed flags couple moments ago 19 minutes left on the clock pit window is open expecting the majority of the field to come in or right about now because the calls are coming over from Tomasi also coming over from Austin Hunter those drivers 10th and 11th drivers are gonna have to be aware where pit road is uh, this is not where you enter because that is way before where that, is like that is like Turn real three. life Atlanta. Yeah, that's like real life Atlanta entry, isn't it? That was crazy to see them checked up so early. But hey, listen, you almost as a driver, maybe you want to be checked up early and know you can do it versus trying that. That's a wild pit road entry, by the way. It, it's not as easy as it looks here at Texas to get off of four and get down there. Be right. That was way early for both those drivers. That'll cost them a lot of time on track. Tomasi in particular, that is at least a five to 10 second mistake just on that entry point. Now, the thing is, keep an eye on where the walls are because one thing the drivers use is that wall paint. There's a little red logo that is the best mark from what we people usually see to get into the pit lane. You miss that mark, you're blowing the speed limit. You go too early, that can cost you three seconds on the racetrack. Yeah, it'll cost you a lot of time depending upon where you, you know, how early you hit it, but you're right. That's a good marker, that red mark up on the wall. It's kind of, you can kind of see it from the last camera angle. Let's see if we can see it here. It'll yeah. be up on the left of your screen, not that one. It's going to be the it, next one, right? It's so once those on the right swings around, you see that little Toyota ish logo. Yep. That's enough to be a mark. And those are the types of marks that everybody uses. Garrett Austin doesn't know that mark. He just pit in turn three. Brett Adams is in. He pit from turn four. Oh, we got a tr truck spinning. That's the, I can't tell who that is from the blur, blur in the Will background. Will Jennings, there. that's not good on the entry. Able to avoid contact though. That's gonna cost him another five seconds. I mean, the good news for him in a way is it happened once he was on pit road, so no penalty. You know, he, he's inside the pit uh, pit road area, but yeah, it's going to cost him a lot of time on track and everyone's coming. We can hear the calls on the radios. Lots of drivers trying out. Here is the 31 now down pit road. That's Patrick Calgill. Leaders are in. It's lap 45 coming to 46. Expecting pit road to get very hectic. Kirby, Mike Toomer Jr., Tanner Johnson to respond soon. Looks like Calgill just got on the marks. 
And you have to keep in mind that a lot of these drivers are going to have to make sure they find those stalls, half concrete, half pavement in the pit box. Yeah, and how well you get into that stall and how comfortable you are stopping right on the marks can matter a lot in how well you do on pit road. Here's Calgill off at pit road. Steven Kirby has inherited the lead, by the way, and we'll get that bonus point for leading a lap. So Kirby's still going for now. They can go an extra couple laps on the gas. Calgill had the best pit exit out of anybody, though. And gained a ton of time. Here is Kirby. Yet to duck down. And for Kirby, the play is simple. Have fresher tires when everyone falls off that one second average fall off. And go from there, it seems, as Smith, Newman, and Alvaro are in. Yeah, there's Newman. Saw a lot of him last week with that room he has decked out with the Michigan Sports Apparel. Doing a great job there. Now up in pit road, here's Kirby again. When he come down this time, let's see what he does here. Mm, truck looks pretty high to be coming down pit road. So I almost think he's going to run it dry. He's going to hope the caution comes out and see what makes of it. But he's committed to this running it dry uh, strategy, it looks like. Can I go a couple more laps at the most? It's been a month so it's continuing to stay at the bottom, and that might be it there, because here's the thing. When you miss the bottom like that on your own, that's usually a sign you're about to get a tire warning. He's coming in this time. He's just told the radio he's pitting. Yep, so here will come this time. We'll watch him here and see how he does. He's going to get down onto the apron correctly because it slowed down. Makes that long trip down pit road. Kirby, nicely done. On entry, Tanner Johnson gets a lap tonight. Edward Pouts also yet to pit. But look at the Hornets just building up. Amunzel still trying to cycle his Johnson with lots of freshies around him. Net leader with an undercut by seven laps is Brennan Chatley, however. That difference right now is seven laps on the cycle between him and the 31. Johnson coming in to close the cycle here. Yeah, this will be the last truck here. And by the way, Justin, another sentiment I heard all week long was, thank goodness we're going to Texas. We're getting away from the short track. Lots of big, wide racetrack, and it's showing so far. We had numerous cautions last week, and so far, we're caution-free at the bigger racetrack. So Brennan Chatley cycles to the race lead. The gap is about three, four seconds right now. Remember, the undercut, that's the big gamble right now. Hoping it stays green, and better yet, he's able to defend once the tires wear through. That gap is already down to two seconds. In fact, he lost two tenths this lap all of a sudden. Well, I was wondering here if Chatley's got a pusher help from Dylan Schmidt or if Dylan Schmidt's trying to run him hard and, uh, you know, make something happen. But I think Schmidt is obviously off cycle because of that wall hit earlier. Probably had to come down pit road off cycle and make something happen. But yeah, Schmidt's just trying to see if he can push Chatley around, but it's not enough, I don't think. Ken gets the bump. In fact, he might be, he gets loose, Chatley does as a result. Yeah, that's not helping. That's wanting to go and pass him, but being afraid to turn the leader. Yeah, I mean, with respect, you don't want to do that. You don't want to be the person who affects the outcome of this race, but you're right. He's not really helping. He's trying to find a way around. He wants that lap back. A few others. We mentioned the pit entry for the 12. Yeah, I've been doing pretty solid around the edge of the top 10. He's dropped to 16th after the pit cycle. He was amongst those on the undercut, but he lost a lot of valuable time with the call. There's a chance he loses the lead lap if it stays green. 12 minutes to go, 24 estimated laps to go, and he's one of the slower trucks on the track with the old rubber, 31 twos. Yeah, having a very hard time here. See him up out of the way, gonna let some trucks by. And trying to kind of keep in line and be effective here. Here's the battle for six and seven. This is Marty Calvert and Graham Wildman. We've seen these guys both involved in different battles throughout the night. Hold on one second. Guess what? This is for the win here. And now, now win. Smith, I can't tell if Smith's trying to let Calgill go or pass. Calgill says, no matter what, thanks for the run. I'm going to go for the lead on my teammate. Oh. 
I think Schmidt was more in the way there, whether he meant to be or not. And now Calgill is on the bottom. Side by side for the point. Fresher tires for Vale. Brett Adams has gained a ton of time with all this. He gained nearly a second with all that to get around the lap traffic and for the race lead. New leader, Patrick Calgill. Now I'm curious what the patience level will be with this lap truck here. Who, by the way, is in the lucky dog spot. Really doesn't need to fight this hard. If a caution were to come out in the next 10 minutes, he is well ahead here on that lucky dog position. But now I think he's finally gone high and is going to let these trucks by. Well, he let the first one by. That's Brett Adams. So real quickly, let's talk about the storyline that you created involving teams so socks, shoes, and feet. I think it's the most interactive question you've had with the field. Oh, I had a lot of fun with this today. A lot of Hold wild on one answer. second. Austin Hunter's mowing the grass. He just mowed through all the turf on the front straightaway. We stay green. Well, as a landscaper, is going to be really upset with Austin Hunter, but a great job here keeping it straight and forward. So let's go through it. We're going to try to show you the trucks as we call off the names. I pull my list here. Sorry. All right, Team Socks, Justin Prince, you ready? We got Grant Wildman, which we'll find in a second on the cameras. It is Grant Wildman. Then Matthew Alaka, who told me you say his name by rhyming it with Chewbacca. I say say Matthew Alaka. Then a previous mentioned Austin Hunter, who we just saw coming in the effects of mowing the grass. We saw Andrew Sharp already. He's got the uh, sock camera ready for us whenever we want to go there, which is kind of creepy. You got Ryan Newman, PRL newcomer. Then you got Philip Beaver, Zach Panzarella, and Stephen Kirby are all Team Socks here and the PRL Truck Series. Now, Team Shoes this is the one I don't understand. It's Colton Easterday. Oh, hold on, yellow. We'll finish this under yellow. Yeah, caution flag takes precedent over shoe choices, but uh, involved in this caution, Nicholas Hunter, 16 spots. He just made a friend in Garrett Austin, and Austin might have a rough run the rest of the way because the caution points are building for Austin. Let's watch it here. I don't know if there actually is contact there. Let's wait and see how the admins are going to deem that. There's a lot of space between them. Can you give the caution point to the air? Yeah, you should, right? You definitely should. By the way, Let's watch it again here. Oh, man, look at that wiggle on the bottom of the track. So the 34 got to the bottom of the track and wiggled, and then started to come back up the track, and maybe some air bubbles got involved, and some technology got involved, and caused that caution. You call that air bubble. I call that an air beach ball. He didn't <laughs> get on the apron, but yeah, that there was definitely air that caused the contact. Yeah. I mean... It. He did say on the radio, and he seemed befuddled, if anything, on that. Oh, and whoa! Zach Panzarella just stayed out as most of the field pits. Wow, that's something he might be regretting right now. He might have thought more people were going to stay out, and then, no, he was wrong. So what he's going to have to hope for now, JP, is that basically this thing has another yellow. We're probably going to get one or two more restarts out of this. So Pandrell is going to hope that these yellows come quick. And he stays at the front of the field. He might point on the time game because about three and a half minutes is the button of return tonight. Four tires for your front runners, including Cal Gale, Brett Adams and company. He was joined on the track, Panzerell was, by Wildman, Toomer Jr. and Tanner Johnson. Let's talk about your side of the card real quick because well some people just put their feet on the table and are now <laughs> playing some big gambles here yeah that's a horrible thought of feet on the table that's that's horrible but you're right i mean panzarella really made a big gamble here and you know it's gonna have to be it's stuck with it now he can't pit now you you sort of have uh yeah, just shown your cards. I was trying to give another foot analogy that's not gross, and I don't have one. So let's say he's shown his cards and uh, is wiggling his toes in front of the field and is kind of stretching out here and trying to make it happen. So let's get back to this. Let's finish up this story. We're since we're under yellow, and let's get through this. So here we got Team Shoes. I'll go through this quickly. We got Colton Easterday. 
Uh, then you got Stacy Hunter, Marty Calvert, Mike Richter, Zach Williams, Edward Peltz, and Jake Maki are all team shoes. Then the gross people. Team Feet, Team Barefoot is admin Nick Hunter, Nick Byer, and your season leading point winner, Patrick Cowgill. Those those are your team barefoot drivers. They received a lot of criticism in Discord today. You can see the appeal for each of those though, because the socks, while people wear socks indoors, the shoes, while people drive with shoes outside the home, and feet, well, socks can slip and shoes feel very thick in the home on the pedals. So, yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely something you said for all three um, and how what your comfort level is probably in normal life affects your choices. Got a couple pictures to show you here, JP. Let's start with uh, Philip Beaver. Here is his shoes. And by the way, he's got the gloves to match. So that's very color coordinated right there for Philip Beaver. Yeah, that led to one of the bigger conversations Apparently that cost $130 combined for the matching set. Yeah, that's a lot, isn't it? And then the next one is Garrett Austin. These are just look wild. Wait to see these. Those are his, he calls them his water shoes. Uh, are those dolphins? Yes, those are, yes, those are dolphins. He's been trying to convince other Peter All drivers on his team over at RBM Shake to, to buy matching water shoes. You said you had more. Oh, no, that's what, actually the only two pictures. And then, of course, we have the foot cam from Andrew Sharp. Well, no, I get the sock cam. No feet cam, please. But we have the sock cam from Andrew Sharp. So, uh, yeah, thank you to the drivers who participated today. It was a fun, interesting conversation that I, um, I, I enjoyed and regretted due to some of the things that were talked about because, well, feet are gross. But regardless, a lot of fun today. Just about all set to go for the restart. This is the race here. There's less than four minutes to go on the clock. Next caution could very well end it. Pantarell, Wallman, Toomer Jr., and Tanner Johnson stay out after the air ends up striking and bringing out the caution flag. Now, the fresh tires are fifth on back. Any sustained run and anybody on the freshies can get the job done fast. Here's my concern for Pandrella and Wildman and the others. Tire spin. Yeah. Please be careful on this restart. You cannot mash the gas pedal and go. You have to really, you know, arc it in there. If you mash this gas pedal, you're going to loop this truck around. Restart zone more sizable than the paper clip. Green flag is out. No tire spin this time. We're back underway. Cowgill or running to fourth. Side by side again builds up for second. Can Panzarello run away? Can Patrick Cowgill get through the crowd and fast? Well, I'll tell you what, Panzarello had a great start. Mike Toomer, I thought, really was a little slow on the start. Maybe babied it a little bit too much on that, on that pedal. Be right here comes Cowgill quickly running down Panzarello here. And he has cleared, not yet. Maybe has cleared Mike Tumor right there. And Calcio has the chance for the run. He's bringing Brett Adams with him. Six estimated laps to do this. Zach Panzarella tries to force them to fight for second. This might play into his hands. Calgill slides right into uh -oh. into the wall. Hard contact for Patrick Calgill. Yeah. And he collects Yellow. the rest of the field. Caution flag is out. Frustration from Calgill, your point slater might have to take the drop. Hard contact with two minutes to go. Wow. Zach Pendrell did exactly what he needed to do. He defended and waited for the yellow to come out and he made it happen. Calgill looked a little happy there. I think that's what he expected out of this race. He told me he, he told me it was not his favorite track. And I said, well, every time you say not your favorite track, you do okay, but uh, Great job for Zach Panzarelli here. The race is over in a minute and 45 seconds. Mandatory repairs from Calgill. He is at risk of DQ. Here's a look. Oh, got loose. And Graham Wallman gets turned around and everybody else joins. Yeah, and uh, this, everyone had a hard time checking up for the wreck here and some different contact and wrecks happened in the back of the field here getting checked up 
for Patrick Cowgill. Well, here you go. is going to come around with that puppy machine. And it's going to... This guy, I guess I, I don't have it. Puppy paddle, doggy paddle his way to, to the win. I, I'm, I failed right there, JP. One minute to go on the clock. Expect a couple more pace laps here. Zach Panzarella has been absolutely celebrating on the radio. He screamed in absolute excitement the second that caution came out. Yeah, great job for him. So tonight, JP, it's a win for Team Sox. And number one in terms of the win column. Lots of drivers congratulating Zach Panzerell over the radio. He's racing a lot of big leagues. He's been in conversations for wins in series like RSR, of course, now in PRL this season. But the main thing was breaking through. Looks like he's done that here. Just 13, make it seven seconds on the clock. Well, I'll tell you what, the drop will not take effect until after, I think, week five. So technically, Pandrella will make up a lot of points on Calgill tonight. I do not believe it's enough to actually take the points lead, but he'll definitely close that gap by a good margin by winning and Calgill finishing pretty far back. Final lap on timing and scoring. We'll see if Barney throws the checkered. It'd be one to green regardless this time around. But Zach Panzarella plays the strategy card and appears to win it. There's the signal up for Barney. One to go. White flag is out. Panzarella just needs to pace it on home. The lights are still on. The race is over. Man, what a great job by Panzarella. That said, had a hard time with the official staying out of the trouble yesterday. Got caught up in a couple wrecks. Was pretty frustrated by the results he was having. You know, he said, I can do this. I know I can. Just I got to stay out of the wrecks. And well, there you go. It's, you know, right here. And I'd say, man, the outpouring of love across the irising driver's chat right now for Zach Panzarella JP is... Uh, is really awesome to see. I mean, people are always happy to see someone win, but look at this, even a bump right there from Brett Adams to say congratulations to Zach Panzarella. The owner of Daily Drivers Incorporated getting things done here tonight, just needs to finish the pace lap to get his first ever win in the PRL. I want some of the other notables. Andrew Sharp got the sixth at the top of the caution flag. Austin Hunter up 16 in the top eight. A very rough break for Calgill with a lot of drivers in the back. By the end of today, still being on the lead lap, Calgill end up finishing 23rd with a meatball. This race with championship implications tonight, but for Zach Panzarella, he puts himself in a victory lane. Welcome to the PRL winner's circle, Zach Panzarella. I'm gonna take it all around, and he'll get his first time burnouts here in PRL. So we'll see if he knows how to do a burnout, JP. That'll be the uh, <laughs> the next question for Zach will be how that works. So he can get around here pretty quickly. Just want to cherish this win. It's the field already being told they can join in on the celebration after Panzarella get it. And it looks like a lot of his competitors have the same thoughts that are already being shouted on the radio. Good win. You deserve it. It's been a long time coming. The whole field joining in to say thanks and congrats. That's awesome, dude. That's 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 league racing. That's so awesome to see and what a great moment. You can almost say here, Zach Pandrella, just like Cody Rhodes this weekend, has finished the story. And the celebration's oh, on no. and someone needs burnout lessons. He's trying it. And you know the wacky thing is apparently the pace car didn't get the signal that the race was over. It just delayed the green. <laughs> that is not supposed to be coming out and it's not coming out ever. But everyone gets to celebrate. 
Unofficial race results coming up in a moment. It's Zach Panzarella getting his first win in the PRL. He does it in a truck. Does it in the truck now against some more celebration with his fellow peers and get it going. Let's go through the grid, JP, whenever you're ready. It's Panzarella who gets it done over Brett Adams. Mike Toomer Jr., a top three for him. What a run for Jay Lass Racing's 42 machine. Brennan Chatley, his best run of the year, finishing fourth. Stephen Kirby at the top five. Andrew Sharp, Mike Richter, Austin Hunter, Tanner Johnson, and Rodrigo Morales had a very quiet race tonight in 10th. Marty Calvert got very high up in the order, but finished 11th, then 12th, went to Kyle Dewey. Then it's Tom C. along with Garrett Austin, Matthew Elvica, Nick Hunter, Stacey Hunter, along with Jake Mackey, Jennings, and Smith, your top 20. 21st went to Wildman, Ryan Newman back in 22nd. Calgill DNFs in the pit lane in 23rd, just ahead of Edward Peltz. Zach Williams, Luke Davis, Phil Beaver, your DNFs, and Mark Kalen. He was in race control slash the wrong session. That's what top to bottom on the running order tonight. Of note, happy birthday to Mike Richter. Another top 10 for him, but happy victory day to Zach Panzarella. Zach, <laughs> you've done it. How does it feel to be a PRL winner and getting it done on the strategy? Unbelievable, guys. I'm glad I got the crying out. I'm on the cool down pass. This means so much. Uh, I'm sure you guys, or some of you guys know, I've been in this league for a long time now since since I was running with the Xfinity guys, and it, it this never felt like a possibility. This is a surreal feeling. I just cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. With this run here tonight, talk us through what was going through your head as you stay out, only a couple others stay out with you, and it becomes between you and the fresh tires for the final laps. Yeah, I had a lot of good luck last season staying out, kind of stealing finishes that I didn't necessarily deserve by doing that. And I got kind of greedy, to be honest. Um, and I really thought more people were going to stay out. Um, and what really kind of convinced me is my last lap I put in before that yellow came out, that last yellow was a 30.3. And my fastest lap of the race was a 30.1 or something like that. So I was like, you know what? Like, it's not that big of a difference. Let me just send it. Um, and I, oh, I, I think I had five seconds left uh, when that caution came out until either Patrick or Brett got me. So thank God I was saved by the bell. But yeah, oh, there was a lot of thoughts going through my head and not a ton of them were positive after I saw three cars stay out with me. Well, buddy, first off, I got to tell you, after the show tonight, we, we need to do some burnout practice because uh, that's fair. something, that's something fair. we learned there. But I thought in my head, I guess you could call Patrick Calgill the final boss because you, my buddy, have finished the story. <laughs> so we, we said that in the Discord. <laughs> <laughs> I know, and I completely agree. Patrick Calgill is honestly the final boss. That dude is incredibly talented. So hard to beat. He's had my number first few races this year and uh, all last year. Uh, yeah, it feels good. I don't care how I did it. <laughs> I'm just glad that I did it. Uh, so yeah, dude, it, it did feel like a, a moment like that. Damn it. I love race car racing. <laughs> <laughs> all right, dude. Well, I'll talk to you later. Great job and congrats on the win. Love you guys. Thank you so much. CM Pennington, that is for you. That is 1000% for you. Mello, my dog who's on the side of the car who recently passed away, that's also for you. It is indescribably special to do it in this league with my amazing team. I cannot thank Tom, Dylan, Dalton, everyone on this team enough. Uh, thank you guys so much. And thank you, RaceBot. I love you guys. And thank you to everybody in PRL. This is a surreal, surreal moment. Let's, let me go celebrate. It's going to Zach Panzarella breaking through for a win tonight here in the PRL trucks. A very emotional one indeed for him, Derek, as Brett Adams comes away second. Another good run for the 23 to start the year. He's with Derek. Brett, you were that close. You were that close to everything that happened. You were technically involved. I think when Patrick kind of pinballed off of you, what, walk me through, what were your thoughts when that last restart happened? Yeah, well, I knew if if uh well first off it was the decision to pit or not i know uh, that was the right call but i was surprised how many guys um stayed off so i, I knew if i could get underneath uh patrick I, I had a good chance and i haven't watched it back I, I don't know how much i contributed to that if i did I, I apologize but um i was definitely under him if that caution didn't come out um yeah one more lap i would have got it but uh huge congrats to uh to zach for the first prl dub yeah, great run by you as well there. You did great. And, uh, you know, on the bigger tracks, it was a much different race tonight than it was last week, huh? 
It was. It was fun, though, with uh, the long green uh, run and managing tires. Uh, it got pretty slippery there towards the end of that, that first run. Uh, we were, top four of us were going back and forth for the lead. It was a lot of fun. All right, Brett. Well, next week is the, the what do you want to call it? The randomizer, the joker, the wild card at Talladega. Are you excited? Yeah, man. Uh, pedal the metal, turn left. It'll be fun. There you go. Well, we'll see you next week in one week's time. Good job on P2 tonight. Thanks. And if I could, real quick, shout out to my wife, Lindsay, and son, Parker, is watching the other room. Um, and to you guys for always putting on a good show. All right. Thanks, Brett. And hello to Lindsay and Parker. And thanks for watching. I guess. So that's Brett Adams coming away second here tonight. Mike Toomer Jr. gets a top three. Mike, it's been an up and down year, but tonight and up. How does it feel to get a top three? I feel it's good to finally perform to the level I think I should be performing at. I, I know, like you said, I've had a tough season so far. Uh, a lot of ups and downs, made some mistakes, but I ran a pretty clean race today. Thought I might have got beat with strategy at the end, but uh, I made it work. So you mentioned about wanting to perform how you expect there. What has been the barrier to getting to where you want to be performing? And what was that difference tonight that got you past it? Uh, I think it's the tracks. I mean, uh, you know, we went to Chicago land. I did pretty well there. Um, but Martinsville last week, I mean, that was just tough for everyone. It's hard to get in a rhythm with, with all those cautions. But I, I think I do pretty well at the mile and a half. And I'm really looking forward to Talladega next week. I think those are, you know, the super speedways are my best tracks. So we'll see what happens. So speaking of Dega, how do you feel about Talladega? I feel good. I'm excited. It's circled on my calendar every year. Um, I'm, I'm ready to get after it, both in officials and next week, this time. Well, Mike, once again, congratulations on the run, a top three from Texas. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. It's Mike Toomer Jr. rounding up the top three here tonight. I'd like to thank the entire top three, Zach Panzarell, Brett Adams, Mike Toomer Jr. for taking time to speak with us post-race coverage for the trucks here on race spot as mentioned it's dega next week and that should be a wild one especially knowing calgio likely has the drop from this race that's a lot more pressure on him now yeah it's gonna be a lot of pressure right we'll see who performs well who's one to make a move who wants to lay in the back and who can come away with the checkered flag we'll be two three maybe even four wide in one week's time. 8.30 p.m. The start time for the trucks when they hit the track for qualifying. You'll see that coverage once again here on Race Spot. But for now, we have to fly back to Fort Worth, Texas. Because remember, there's another race on the docket coming up, right? Before that race in Dega. Yes, it's time for the daytime. It's time for a day race. The Grand National Series on track. Welcome once more to PRL action here on Race Spot. Once again, just Prince Derek Watson with you, Joshua Lee, producing tonight's coverage here from No Limits, Texas. A different type of setting. The daytime, a little bit more sunnier for these Grand National cars. A different type of style of racing. But so far, so interesting has the season as well been because, well, last week was also Martinsville. Yeah, it's a pretty similar schedule here. It's going to be, you know, Texas today, Dega, Dover, Kansas, Darlington. And there's that wild card right there, Road America on week eight. That'll, that'll be a determining factor. And a lot of people can't plan on that being a drop with Talladega next week. So May 15th could be an important date in deciding the points that are. Let's take a look at the points, though, and see how they round out here for the Grand National Series. Richard Regan has a 11-point lead over Dustin Scruggs, and then five points back is Reese Bogue. Then it's Bradley Holly, Jeff Evans, Ted Lowendick, all tied at 73 points, all tied for fourth. And then Daniel Knight, Abner Acosta, Colton Lane, and Michael Lemieux round out your top 10. It's been interesting how those drivers have flared things around tonight, coming into tonight, better phrasing. Team-wise, though, we've seen Reek and Boke Motorsports do very well again. Up 20 points, but what about Racing Overdrive? What about Racing as a whole has three of the organization of the top five? In fact, RBM and what about combining for five of the six teams with more than 100 points? The other team being Six Box Motorsports with Dominic Begin. A lot of drivers need to pick up a lot of points. 
If they want to get some good points finishes for said team, Precision Racing Esports, seventh entering the night in the team standings. The only other team outside the top five to have a top five on the season. Now, heading back to the racetrack. First things first, a lot of drivers on the bad side have to start from the pit lane, or rather from the back of the field. Mark Kalen with the known qualifying penalty, as well as Nick Bear, along with Thomas Sink, Richard Regan Jr., James Morgan, Chris Dean, Abner Acosta for causes of cautions at the paperclip. Good news, it's Nick Bear's birthday. It is his birthday, so happy birthday. And <laughs> Mark is not here for qualifying. No, Marcus is apparently just going to sit this out. There's a beautiful trace chair there, though. I was going to say, happy birthday, Mark Beyer, or uh, Nick Beyer, pardon me. I got my names mixed up in a second. Uh, happy birthday to him. So, yeah, qualifying is underway. About two and a half minutes left. Only two people have turned a time so far, which is Jeff Evans and Colton Lane. So currently, JP, Jeff Evans is your pole sitter. This right here is the 25 machine. That is Danny Cervantes on track. As mentioned earlier on, Mike Richter also celebrating his birthday today. With the, the drivers with the penalties, a shocking amount of those drivers outside of that not even want to qualify at all. That's kind of a surprise because Texas with this car is even more so track position based. It's even more so tire saving based because it's not like a drafting race like the trucks. No, it's not. It's going to be a very different race because, A, the draft isn't going to be as prevalent, and, B, as we see that awesome photo there of Nick McLaughlin, with it being a daytime race, this track is going to be warmer, it's going to be slicker, it's going to be more loose, and it's going to be more difficult to get these cars around this track here at Texas. Ted Lowendick currently top of the board in the session. Daniel Knight to second. And so, Ted... Laying the hammer down at 30.6s is the only driver to do so here. Now, a lot more driver skill base too. It's worth thinking about too. Gonna have to manage a lot of fall off with it being a day race too. The track conditions, well, it's a scorcher for an April track setting because remember, oh. it's Texas. And what's oh. the thing about Texas? Well, it's 100 plus degrees of dry heat in the summertime. It's 85 at this time in real life as well. Yeah, that's awful. Look at that temp, 115. That's about 40, what, 40 degrees warmer than we saw in the truck race. So that's going to affect how these cars behave, how the tire wear, everything about this track here. As we see another car here coming down this track, that's the 184 here coming down here into turn number three, trying to get it as low as possible here. That's Bradley Holly, of course. And I'm telling you right now that that transition out of two was scary for the trucks, but how loose this track is, it could be worse for these Grand National cars. Top of the board, Bradley Holly. He gets himself the pole right before the end of the session. Just 13 of our 23 entrants, though, setting qualifying times. Let's find out how they'll run to start things off tonight. 55 minutes on the clock. It's Bradley Hawley, who starts on the pole. Three one hundreds quicker than the Richmond pole sitter, Dustin Scruggs. Solid speed up on the front row, but Adam Zemke looks for a lot of luck tonight. He'll be starting third alongside Ted Lowendick. Daniel Knight gets a top five quality run. He's alongside the Tierra wearer of Matt Gagnon. That's an interesting photo too. Reese Bogue in seventh, Danny Cervantes in eighth, Doug Evans and Jeff Evans, your top 10. Nick McLaughlin and Colton Lane in the top half of the field here in Texas. 13th went to Steve Loving, Richard Regan Jr., the first those not allowed to qualify. Dapner Acosta in the same boat, Michael Lemieux chose not to qualify. Dominic Begin, French confuses, ATVO sometimes, don't you know? Mark Kalen. He didn't even sit, stay in the car seat for qualifying with Pelony. James Morgan changed from blue to red to see if that changes his luck. Nick Bear celebrates a birthday from 20th. Dotson Geyer starts 21st and looks to replicate the performance of his sponsor mate. Chris Dean 22nd and Thomas Sink starts shotgun. So we get all set to go racing here as 
Birthday celebrations continue for some drivers. And Nick McLaughlin steals the celebrations and says, thank you for the birthday wishes. Even though it's not his birthday, I believe. Your keys to win here at Texas. I mean, obviously it's going to be how well you can serve those tires and how well you patient you can be at these at this track. However, the problem is a lot of your typical front runners, Regan, Richard Regan, Abner Acosta, you know, even Mark Kalen, James Morgan, all starting from the back due to different reasons. And so that's going to be a really interesting part to this race here. But man, I think if Bradley Holly can hold on and conserve these tires and this race stays green, Bradley Holly has got to be in the catbird seat. You mentioned the Holly in the catbird seat. Is he your pick? Man, there's been a lot of great talent. Dustin Scruggs, uh, starting P2, has had an amazing season here. Ted Lowendick in P4 has shown incredible talent in, uh, you know, ovals overall while being a road course veteran. It's hard to pick one here. You know, my 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 sentimental pick, if I could. He's had a lot of hard problems with hardware lately and his bad luck. Man, if Danny Cervantes could get one week of good luck, I think Danny Cervantes could turn a lot of heads here starting from P8. Long-time series veteran. You know, I have a lot of drivers to find a way around though early though. Just about all set to go here. Bradley Hawley on the pole for the first time in a while, by the way. How long has it been for Bradley Hawley since setting the pole? He hasn't been on the pole on a Wednesday night in two years. The all-time pole sitter in PRL Wednesday night stock car racing is in control for the 42nd time in his career. The RBM development driver of Scruggs alongside. Green flag is out. Let's go racing once more. Grand National style from Texas. Toyota Power zips its way to the point. Dustin Scruggs from the high side rips away the race lead from Bradley Hawley. Hawley seems to be in full save mode already with how much he's backing the corners up compared to these other drivers. Yeah, Hawley did a great job. Just, listen, if Dustin Scruggs wants to go and he wants to burn all the tires and burn all the gas, why, why not? Hey, go try it out and see how it works for you. Bradley Hawley's a veteran of the PRL and is willing to kind of sit back and wait his turn here. And look at Ted Lomendick already back to third. By the way, new camera angle as Bradley says he has tonight here. I don't see much different about them. Well, look at the one on the right. I think that's attached to him. Yeah, look at where that is. Oh, yeah. I think that might be around his chest. You're right. It's on his head. Apparently, he just got the correction. It's headphones, yes. I am blind. I don't see the giant Go GoPro on his head. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, but Bradley told me, he's like, hey, it's a new camera tonight. I want some feedback. Well, I like it, Bradley. That's a cool way to see what the driver sees, sort of our own PRL version of the real-life NASCAR uh, helmet cams. So great job uh -huh. there by Bradley. Okay, I have an error question here. How distracted is that? Because here's the thing. I just got an even closer look to that. That's not just a GoPro. That's his webcam. That yeah, appears so to have been clamped to his headphones. I have a strong feeling that might not last. Yeah, I was wondering the same thing. So we'll wait and see here. It goes here. So Dustin Shrugs doing a great job holding Bradley Holly off here. But now, Holly quickly under attack from the banana of Ted Lowendick. And up to the high side to do so, in fact. For a second. Just can't get the rotation down yet. But the reason we're seeing a lot of these drivers play the do I push or do I save game is these machines burn up a lot of wear and fast around the circuit. Already, we're at four tenths of fall off. Yeah, already and already we're pretty much at a single file. Look at this back here, probably through what, P12, P11. And look how it's a single file. Look at the back of this camera shot. Everyone comes around here. 
it's hard to find a two wide battle very much in this field. Look at this, this is a great shot here. You gotta go back, oh, 12, 13 cars back to find a two wide battle. A little bit of smoke as someone scrubbed the wall. Yeah, that's one thing we have to talk about here. It was very loose for the trucks off that corner. With these machines, they trend to be, if you burn up the right front, you knock down the wall style of racing. Yeah, which can be good news for those drivers because some drivers would prefer that versus to knock the, the wall uh, down. Tightness. Well, it, it's a question of what kind of car do you like here? As we're seeing Richard Regan here, current up in P7, doing a great job, by the way. Started a little deep in the field due to that penalty. But it, it's a matter of preference and how you drive a car, right? Some drivers love loose race cars. They love the car to really be on, just on, on the verge of wrecking every lap. And there's drivers who want to have a very stable race car. They don't want to stress out on it long. They'd rather have a tighter race car. So it, it, it's really a, a personal preference. It's sort of like pineapple or pizza, I guess. Lead up to nearly a full second, by the way, Scruggs over Holly. So as the drivers temple themselves here, the questions continue to add up here when it comes to the play-in. So far, seven spots for Richard Regan Jr. That's not a shock with him being Richard Regan Jr. But he's going to have to temple himself in the heart of that field at the back end of this lead train. Yeah, he's doing a great job here. As you said, it's really going to be careful, though, not to burn everything up here. Or what happens by the time he gets to you near the front of this pack, he will have nothing left. Look at these drivers making much more gradual turn-ins than I think what we saw in the trucks. Getting it just out of the white line and then tracking it back out here through this little dog leg. And by that dog leg, by the way, I want to talk about that later in the race. There's Mark, by the way. At least he made it to the race. Yeah, it's kind of hard to race on the track by not being in the seat. Uh, yeah, he was definitely not going to miss the race, but you can see the steering movement. A few drivers getting tight, plowing tight in the air. He's not yet. Yeah, it's one of my favorite parts of the driver camp, as you know. Typically, if you watch that wheel, there's Mark giving the thumbs Don't up. Don't let go there. New hands on the wheel, Mark. All Hands on the right at all times, please. Well, on the bright side, as there's a lot of pushing from behind as well, he's getting. I believe his puppy, Sa, are chasing each other. So everything is happening. It's like a, he's having a time. It's like a race within a race right there. Yeah, don't you love it when you do a sim race and all of a sudden you, you end up having all your pets want to jump on your lap oh my and chase each other right in, on top of your steering wheel? Uh, not on the steering wheel, but I've had the, the whole cat in the lap thing before. That's that's an interesting moment here. But Ted Lowendick now the battling for third and fourth with Adam Zipke and up here on the top lane trying to get that better run off the corner. Ted at one point was up there with Bradley Holly, falling back a little bit here and trying to make it happen on the bottom of this racetrack here. The seed through the beginning of the corner, the bottom lane works better. In that case, Ted clears him. Sometimes off the corner, the bottom or the top will work better because you build all that momentum. One of several fights building up on the racetrack. Here is my Dagnon. He's trying to gain followers, it looks like. It looks like he started a comedy Twitter or something based on the username. Well, hey, if it works, it works. The problem is, is that Twitter? I, I mean, it could be. He didn't say what. We didn't say what platform it is. But we'll assume it's Twitter, so that you can go follow Matt and uh, as at m dot gogs underscore racing. Is that Gags or Gogs? It might be Gags. Uh, yeah, G A because it's his name. G A G. You're right. But Get, it's, getting users right and better yet, what platform is is critical because one. Because does Twitter have dots in your usernames? They do, but okay. you know what is more important? Look at the wheel. He is using a lot more wheel lot than everybody else. Wheel. Yeah, that thing was moving. It, it, what I wonder, though, and we talked about this before, you and I both have, is that sometimes force feedback is too high in a, in a wheel. And when you see that kind of movement in that car, I almost wonder if he has too much force feedback. And there's a point where the force feedback drives the car and not the driver. And I wonder if that's what was happening there, with all due respect to Matt. Yeah. See if we can get an answer to that as this run goes on. Zemke nearly to the wall. Richard Reagan Jr. up to fourth. Also hearing a lot of action starting to build up in the heart of the pack. 
Drivers like Doug Evans and that are seeing a lot of fall off in the back of the field. That's where Kalen and company are still battling for 16th. And here's the thing. None of them seem to be content on just saying, let's keep it calm and work together. No, let's take all the spots and have a wrestling match in the infield. Yeah, lots of things are happening here very quickly here at Texas. You see, I think this Nick McLaughlin back there in the green car leading around. There's Mark Kalen, who said to me, at times it has been a good track for him. At times it's not been a good track for him. And in fact, he's hit turn four so often here that uh, fellow race bot commentator Joey Tevin calls turn four Texas Kalen Corner. Why? Because that's how often Mark's hit it. He just sort of <laughs> basically, basically Mark has basically signed the wall with his car. So it's just called Kalen Corner. Well, in the words of our spotter, Nick Hunter tonight, it's signed with bubbles. My bubble. Oh, speaking of bubbles, there's not much of a space for a bubble there between him and Steve Loving. Steve, of course, driving out. I love that classic Windows paint scheme. The Windows 95 brings back a lot of memories of uh, that old screensaver with the maze. You never could get out of that thing. Hey, when you end up hitting a paint scheme like that, you keep running until they change the template. <clears throat> the Fords. So, Kalen in the Ford gets the inside to hold on for now in the back. By the way, the lead is gone for Dustin Scruggs. Richard Regan Jr. is looking for third. Scruggs is down to just two tenths up. He is falling off a tenth more a lap compared to everybody else after pushing hard the first 20. Yeah, and we talked about that was gonna be a possibility for some drivers who you push really hard here. I mean, the track is super hot here. You could basically, I would think you could fry an egg on this racetrack pretty easily here. And uh, it's just hot, burning up tires. And so right now, Dustin Scruggs, Bradley Holly doing a great job here to stay in line. Let's not push, let's wait. And there's Richard Regan up to P3, by the way, trying to get there. Holly just pacing himself before he gets a dive down, though. Much better on center off, though, compared to what Scruggs is doing. And was going to say with the trucks, but even more so what we're seeing than it turns around and see then that if you can't exit out of that corner at full pace it's a struggle yeah Speaking struggle's of a good word for this here we go sorry here we go scruggs getting loose holly wants to go scruggs is at the risk very quickly to losing this lead out of turn two he's drifting it again Oh, yeah, drifting is something that can happen. I know you said some drivers were going to get tight and sort of plow the wall, but here comes Bradley Holly back under Dustin Scruggs. Can he can make the pass here? Look at that beautiful shining paint, by the way, the sun reflecting off of it. And he will complete the pass here and lead this lap. Bradley Holly reclaims the lead. That's the first led lap, by the way, for him. And just like that, able to settle back into clean air. No time but the present to do so. Richard Regan Jr. is within four tenths of him now. You know, I, I have all the respect in the world for Richard Regan, but sometimes when you hear a driver say, I don't like a track, it means they're going to do well. I talked to Richard earlier and I said, hey, do you like this track? He said, no, I hate it. But I think he said hate. He said, no, I don't like it. And he kind of laughed. And I was like, oh, I mean, he'll do well. And here he is up to P3. Now, I believe you got an update involving 14 you tracked down the socials, is that right? I did a, a little bit of, I guess, stalking, if you want to call it that. A little bit of, I, I call it investigation. I'm a, I'm a broadcast journalist, if you will, Justin Prince. So if we can go back to that driver cam, that is his Instagram account, m.gags huh. underscore racing. That is an Instagram account. It is not a Twitter or X or Twix or whatever you want to call that nowadays. It's, it's Instagram. So there you go. Go follow him. Matt, you gotta you gotta uh, make that more clear next time, buddy. Up to second, by the way, Rich Regan Jr. I'm sorry, do you do social media on a candy bar? If I understood that correctly, you said Twix. Yeah, it's you take TWI from Twitter, and then X from X, and you make Twix. 
So you send the posts on a candy bar? Am I missing and, the and, metaphor? And, and to be honest, one of the worst candy bars. I'm going to get some hate mail. It's at Derek Races on whatever you want to call it. But Twix is the second worst candy bar next to a Butterfinger. For the race lead, Richard Regan Jr. within two tenths. He's gaining another tenth a lap. Now Holly's the one falling off compared to those up front here. Yeah, I know Bradley might have burned up some, some equipment getting that pass made here. And here comes Regan, who's done a great job getting through the field after not being allowed to qualify. You see the side-by-side -side webcams here. And now and Richard's going to take the inside. Oh, he's going to dive it. That's a common thread here. Poke to the inside, force the driver up the track, get the run for turn three. That's what Regan Jr. does. That's what Regan Jr. gets to work. That's what Regan Jr. now has to get that inside for the fight. And here's Both two. drivers working the wheel, just about dead even. A lot more movement for the 56. Try to say, look at all that wheel movement, the 56 through the corner here. And by the way, that dog leg, it is wide, JP. You and I both know that, the drivers know that. But there's something about that dog leg that once you're in it, in the car, looking through your point of view, it doesn't feel quite as wide. There's a lot of drivers who are not comfortable with that dog leg. Obviously, these drivers are. Giving each other a solid amount of space there. Holly, giving a solid amount of space, just about squeezes the 56 to the bottom. Oh, that was close. He nearly knocked the wall down. Yeah, Bradley got maybe a little too high there and still holding on to it. These guys are side by side. What's going to happen here, by the way, if you're Dustin Scruggs, Ted Lowendick, even Daniel Knight, you've got to be excited by this battle here because the more they race side by side, the more those drivers get a chance to get back into this. There they are right there in the back of the camera shot. Bradley Holly defends the job. Richard Regan Jr. not able to make the pass. And so far, the top line, a good defensive line, both series have showed a tiny trend in that mark. If you can drive up top and defend, you can make it a difficult time for anyone else faster. Well, yeah, that's the question. Look at them. Now they got single file. Maybe they realized the mistake they were making there by racing it that hard. But man, look at how much it feels like Regan's fighting that car. Not only with the web, with the webcam view there, with how it looked, but just how much that car moves around. It moves up the hill further than Bradley Holly. This feels like Regan's is not in love with this car here. Back to the bumper, 40 minutes on the clock here. It looks like Regan Jr. is showing the bump, says I want to have it. Probably Holly doesn't let him do that though. Yet again, we've seen aggression behind this year. This is one of our more intense battles of the season here. Now it's Regan Jr. going late arcing. Yeah, Regan's going to try to, uh, it's almost like I'm going to squeeze more of just a push, I guess, up the hill here, trying to get a better run, carry more speed, and now Regan's going to complete it and move to the lead. A tight job there to get the pass done, but Regan Jr.'s got the clean air. There's a look for the webcam now from Holly's viewpoint. Now in second, he's getting a little bit loose now with the dirty air. Look at how much he's having to turn a bit in the right. Turn three, I think, might show it a bit. This is just how it looks again. Apologies for the brightness there, but that's how computer screens work. But exit there, he's having to correct a fair bit. Looking, looking up for a very quick second to see what the telemetry says about how his lap went. But you're right, look at how much that wheel moves here. It's gonna move to the left. And he's gonna start to track it out a little bit. Nope. In the case of one and two, he's pretty far left, but man, oh wow, look at that. That's the exit right there. That's how scary a turn two yep. exit is. That's Bradley Holly. Look how much it snapped to the right all the us out of nowhere. That's what's destroying his chances there. Every time he's lost time at the track, it's been right there. The wiggle to get out of the gas, correct it back to the right. There's a half a tenth. So, familiar sight here in Pierre Grand National. Richard Regan up to the front. It's Regan, Holly, Scruggs, Lowendick, and Daniel Knight. Daniel Knight very quietly up in P5. Don't think we really talked about him tonight, JP, but doing a pretty awesome job here in this race. Yeah, he's been there the entire race. It's Dustin Scruggs, meanwhile, has fallen back into the clutches of Ted Lowendick. They're near even on pace. 
but Scruggs is really showing the damage of how hard he tried to break from the pack, and this is the type of car where if you do that the wrong way, you see the result. Yeah, you can definitely see the result when it happens. Here's Dustin Scruggs carrying that McConey setup shop logo and scheme there on the car. And oh, doing a great whoa. job. Big troubles in the backdrop there. Yeah, that I was, believe that was, Zem that was Zemke who just about popped the wall. That was Jeff Evans who, who scrubbed the wall to avoid hitting him. Yeah, big moments for a couple moments. His P5 also pulled out of line pretty quickly, too. And I was looking back to see if there was something happening, but now you have got the bigger effect here. Back in this little nice little gaggle of five or six cars, he marked Kalen on the bottom. And now everyone's sort of searching for a line back here to try to make something work. Jeff Evans up top here wants to try to clear this field and catch up with James Morgan. Galen's even thinking about three wide back there. Bubbles saying, Let's not be soft about this. Let's go three wide for the 14th spot in the backdrop. Lane hugs the bottom on screen. I'll tell you what, that's something you expect to see next week at Talladega, JP, but three wide at a very hot and loose uh, Texas was not on my bingo card. At this point, every bingo card has caught on fire because of the heat, because Texas. Yeah, right? Pit stops are expected sometime soon. There's 65 estimated laps to go. We are inside the estimated window for the fuel run. However, you can go still to 66 laps. That's about near halfway in the race, if you're thinking about it that way. In other words, when do you blink? I think a lot of drivers are going to want to run this car right here until it feels completely uncomfortable. This way you know you have as much as possible left in the, in the set of tires on the second run. If you pit right now, what you know is probably going to happen is that by the end of the second run, coming to the checker, you're not going to like how this car behaves. And, and when you're trying to battle for a position on the last lap, the last thing you want is a, you know, a, a, a car that's not behaving the way you want it. So I think a lot of drivers will push this first set of tires as far as they possibly can until the first driver pits. Once the first driver pits, all bets are off and the floodgates open. Of note, Michael Lemieux has just parked it for the night. He's your first DNF. Just running towards the back half of the field. Now, the rest of the field looks for chances for moves like Ted Lewandick here. Remember how you just talked about that quad oval can get a little bit dicey? Lewandick nearly turned the 11 to get to this inside here. Yeah, I said, I don't want to put that about that quad over. It looks so wide through the camera shots, but it doesn't feel that way. But it, it absolutely doesn't. Like, I've personally cut through the grass a lot just Lots because of, times. of that, how tight that is. Yeah, that's a pretty common driver reaction to cut that grass right here on that corner right there because you're so scared of tracking out. And even right there, it's, it's a little easier on the exit for some reason, but that entry into that dog leg or that quad oval, whatever you want to call it, it's a, it's, it's a little treacherous inside a car. Treacherous and one XC. Yeah, so, that's right. So, so far, a green flag run when it comes to the Grand Nationals tonight here at Texas Motor Speedway. Five minutes away from the halfway, side by side for third. You know who's been looking solid at the end of this run now? Ooh. Abner Acosta, he's a tenth quicker than everybody else, but nowhere to go with Lomadick in the grass. That car in the back of the shot there, that white and black car scrubbed the wall last time by. You see the smoke kick up from that. Here they are, three wide again. This is for second place. This is uh, third place, pardon me. This is Hotley, or sorry, this is Scruggs, Lomadick, and Acosta. I'll get it right eventually, JP. Sorry about that. Here goes Acosta to the inside. Don't look now, Abner might have a chance if this stays green the whole way with the way he's conducting the pace. Still has to find a way to get around the 11, but he is getting the move to the inside. Scruggs doing a solid job defending, but Acosta's the best tires right now on the track can argue. All right, well, here we go. Richard Regan, by the way, just set the fastest lap of the race that last time by here, JP. So obviously he still has something going for him, but here's on board with Abner Acosta. He's gained 12 spots. Well, at least that's plus 12 spots. Of course, it's plus 12 he gained, but 
Uh, there it is. Abner Acosta up all these spots here. One of the drivers that was not allowed to qualify. And now let's watch this wheel here from NSIM, if we can see it a little bit here. Let's see how much this thing moves. Not as much. Here we go. That's a good shot. Let's watch the exit. That seems a lot more comfortable than what we saw Bradley Holly doing about five laps ago. Funny thing is, after Acosta got by in the pass, Richard Regan Jr. started to kick it up another notch here. He just picked up three tenths Regan Jr. has now since Acosta's gotten it clean air. 32 minutes now underneath on the clock. Well, you talked in the opening of the show back before the truck race about how clean air was king. Well, Richard Regan has proven not to be true here because he is trying to take every advantage of it he can. But there's back to Dustin Scruggs, P4, 5, and 6. That's Scruggs, Daniel Knight, and uh, Ted Lowendick, the banana back there, trying to all make things happen here. Now I think JP, for the most part in this race, you know, uh, for what it's worth, this is going to be a race of just staying in line, waiting for someone to make a mistake. It's going to be hard to push too hard here with how much these tires have worn out probably. But there you go, Daniel Knight trying to prove me wrong. See Knight push a lot to be able to make passes. He's made some bump and runs before. Not needed that time. That's how much Scruggs is struggling on the run. You know who's been going good, I was about to say? One of your own drivers, James Morgan's up 10 as well. Yeah, and up to P9 quickly getting up there, having a quiet night. Just trying to stay out of trouble and do what he can. But just speaking right here, and I mean this with respect to Daniel Knight and even to Ted Lowendick, I can't figure out if they're having great runs or if Dustin Scruggs is just having a really bad run. And I, and I think it's probably more the latter that Scruggs has just burned up those tires and just kind of hanging on for what it's worth. Yeah, seems to be paying the Pied Piper, as it's called. You push hard to start, you pay the price later. There's a saying when it comes to the tire model, right? You can only slide so much or push so hard because you don't gain tire work during a run, you lose it. You lose your tire grip. Yeah, isn't that true? It's, that's so, so true. Back in the field here, this is going to be James Morgan on the bottom of your screen, and there's Jeff Evans on the top side. Mark Caitlin's back in this shot. So a lot of talented drivers here as Morgan's now caught up to the draft here of P8. That's Matt Gagnon, our, uh, our mystery social media uh, user. And there's Reese Bogue back there in 11th. Reese also told me he's not, not a fan of this track, says he doesn't like it as much. Oh, there's Mark. That was, is that turn four? That was Kalen Corner. Yeah, got a little bit dicey there, but to get back to the conversation on bubbles, well, back to full screen. The dogs have calmed down. His teammates, well, they're not keeping it calm right now. In fact, Kalen just said he's pitting. He wants to come in right now. I don't and is that us? So Kalen's coming in after that contact, and the starship is blinking. That has nothing to do with the pit stop, but it will have something to do with him speed oh, by a mile. Check. Yeah, that's got to be a speeding penalty, I would think. And it, there is a black flag for Mark Kalen. And by the way, I don't think that pit right there was by choice. I think there's some damage from that smack in the wall in four because uh, this is a little early in my book to be pitting on cycle. Kalen was 63 in a 45 zone. Uh, that's, a, yeah. that's a hefty ticket. What is that, $500? <laughs> Luckily, I don't know. I've never had one of those. But uh, yeah, it's especially it's a lot. And if it's construction or a school zone, it's even worse. It's, 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 it's no fun to do the math on those. Here we go. Dustin Scruggs now. So maybe these are scheduled. Scruggs pits out of the top five comes down here. And I think now with the next three get laps now, Justin, the floodgates will open. Once one person does it, it's just monkey see, monkey do. We are at midway in the race on time. 28 minutes complete in the 55 minute race. The lead for the 56 up to nearly two seconds now. Jeff Evans is the next to tap out. That's why he's falling down the pylon. And the problem is he just tapped so hard he spun the car around. Mm. And for the second time, we have a Ford that spins out entering pit road. Yeah, not good news for Jeff Evans. Jeff, one of our multi, I guess, multi-class superstars of PRL, does the Monday Night Prototype Leagues, and then comes in here on Wednesdays and does uh, NASCAR. And here comes your race leader. Richard Regan has decided it's now time to put new tires on. 
51 laps into the run. There's the replay, bottom corner. And no surprise, car 51 speeding, 42nd hold. Yeah, speeding indeed. And you see him lock it up there. Knew it was doing it. Just tried to try to get it slowed up there. And he cost himself more time on pit road. There's James Morgan in the background. There's a car in the back and misses pit stop or misses pit box, pardon me. That was Daniel Knight. Here's Ted Lowendick. Colton Lane all of a sudden. Salvin had one of his better runs. He's now in the conversation, depending on the cycle, being the top five soon. He and Lowendick are battling four lead lap points here, in fact as the rest of the air leaders just pit. Thomas Sink has also missed his pit stall. And I believe at the line it was Colton Lane, so he'll pick up that one bonus point in PRL for leading a lap if that's indeed was how the results panned out here. Now up in front of Lowen Dick, and there's Richard Regan right in front of them. Pit stops coming up this time by Richard Regan Jr. already cycling in front of them. And Colton Lane is the next to tap out. Much much calm as everyone else coming in includes Cervantes, Christine, both just completed service in the air in the pit road, a couple others. By the way, a change of Mark Martin throwback tonight. That's a more so of a throwback to the, what was that year? The 2001, 2000-ish? Eagle One I think cars? 2000, I think in 2000-ish, yeah, that seems right, because 2001, yeah. we basically had the, uh, the Johnny Benson sponsorship that moved that paint scheme to Benson. Yes, you're right. Before he became the uh, the Viagra car in the mid 2000s. Well, Low and Dick and McLaughlin are the yet to pit. They're the only ones not to do so. As a matter of fact, Ted is very slow on the race track. Say, look at that difference in the, in the speed there. I mean, that's just how much he's having to low up there, you know, to get through the corners of his old tires and looking looking at all the lifting here. I, not he's not going out of time either, is he? Oh, yes. He that was a late stop, I thought. That right front seems burned up to a crisp. Yeah, I really did. You could just hear how much he was off the gas in the corner to keep it woed down there. So that's the dangerous staying out is you give up so much time compared to the guys who, the drivers who've just taken tires. Now we got 37 up top here. Going to now be under attack. So Nick McLaughlin hoping for a caution flag here. Right now he's got more than half the field pinned to lap down, depending on the timing of things that could get interesting. In fact, it should rather say, that number's reducing the more time that passes. At each corner that passes, it's almost reducing because I mean, look at the look at the difference. Watch Jeff Evans here, who is having a tough night with that penalty. But watch how much he'll close here. He'll probably be there, I'm guessing, by the end of one and two, because he'll be so much faster in this corner. Look at this passing right by. It's like a multi-class race right there, Justin. Go up to about 667 laps in. Just got note of the tire numbers, why Bradley Holly fell off late. The tire wear for these drivers is in the 30s, and those are for the best savers. McLaughlin might pop a tire before the fuel runs out of train. <laughs> yeah, that's something that can happen in our racing, and we don't talk about it a whole lot, but it, it very much can happen here. Rich Regan all the way back up to P2, by the way, about nine and a half seconds back, so just sort of sitting in the catbird seat waiting for this pit stop to happen and the 62 call depending i thought it was gonna be nick speaking up but nope not nick yeah that's someone else that is nick he is pitting he's okay, 37 he called the wrong number. yeah he called the wrong number he threw me off there and that closed out the window net leader by two three seconds right now richard regan jr over bradley hawley the difference on their tire since just the one lap Regan Jr. with 23 minutes to go looks extremely comfortable if it stays great. The undercut call for Dustin Scruggs got him to third on track. Abner Acosta and Daniel Knight, the current top five. Chase Morgan is now also one of the quickest cars to the racetrack. He is running three tenths quicker than the race leader. Just got the confirmation of how bad it was for McLaughlin. He was at 14% of the right front. Oh. If McLaughlin ran another two to three laps, he would have crashed. Yeah, would have at least popped a tire and, and had a very, very hard time. This is going to be Chris Dean and Dominic begin here back in 15th and 16th. 
This is a tight battle right here with about 22 minutes to go here on the track. Yeah, and for Dominic at least, it's been a nightmarish time, especially with some of the runs. Chris Dean, you can throw on the same boat. Short tracks were not his forte at Richmond and Martinsville. Much better on his first mile and half of PRL. Yep, going back up here to Scruggs and Acosta back in third and fourth. And again, as we said, during the truck race, a lot of drivers just said to me they were stoked to be on a bigger track. They, they, uh, a lot of people left Martinsville frustrated, even if they weren't involved in a wreck somehow. They were frustrated by the number of yellows, by the start and stop nature of the race. They, they, everyone said, hey, this will be a better race. And I'm wondering, everyone wanted it so much to be a better race that we've all kind of backed up our lines and, you know, made much, much cleaner racing here because it's been a both for the trucks and the Grand Nationals. Pretty awesome, clean racing so far. Now, let's get back to your conversation of the day. Oh, well, here we go. Yeah. So we did this in the Grand National chat as well. Are you team sock, team shoe, team barefoot? I should note, by the way, I in the booth, I am surrounded by you heathens that are team barefoot. Uh, yourself and I think jo our producer Joshua Lee are both team barefoot. And even uh, Nick Hunter in here spotting for us in the background, I believe is team barefoot as well. I am team socks. I am I'm team socks all day long, by the way. Just want to point that out. But let's go through this really quickly here. In this race, the only team barefoot driver is Mark Kalen. Your team shoes are Richard Regan and Dustin Scruggs. So your first place and your fourth place drivers. And then everyone else I have on a lip, which is going to be uh, Danny Cervantes, Colton Lane, Nick McLaughlin, Daniel Knight, Chris uh, Dean, James Morgan, Jeff Evans, Dalton Geyer, Matt Gagnon, and Steve Loving are all give their right answer was his team socks. So uh, there you go. So a very, very, very majority answer in the Grand National Series, Justin. An interesting discussion point, yes. Oh, wow. Taking a look at some of the others as they zip around. Here's a look at Reed Spoke. This is for eighth. Colton Lane, with him going a little bit on the longer side, did lose a bit of time on track. Didn't have the quickest of entries, but he is still in the ballpark for one of his best runs of the season. Yeah, a great run here is where he's at, honestly. I mean, you know, all these guys, Mark Kalen's done. Mark Kalen's really had a great, probably what, two months of a resurgence here. You know, really had a couple great races at the end of last season and doing well here. Here is James Morgan under attack, but up to P5, by the way. And that's Daniel Knight right behind him. Morgan was on the do not qualify list due to some incidents at Martinsville. Man, look at that car got a little loose into the, into the corner, I felt like, and sort of drifted up. And now here he is holding off Daniel Knight the best of his ability. There's the lap difference. Morgan has been quicker than Knight for the past few laps. In fact, last time by, Morgan was up to two tenths quicker compared to the 17. Knight equals set of tire wear. This is likely going to be in the conversation for fourth pretty soon if they remain patient. Yeah, so wait and see. As you said, you saw the interval was a moment ago and Morgan I mean by the very thin margins it's quicker than Daniel Knight these guys are doing a great job staying in line and I think it'll allow them to catch Dustin Scruggs here they're probably only what another I mean they should barely what be within the drafting range just just slightly under 35 estimated laps to go for those to the NPRL Grand National Series action from Texas Motor Speedway Richard Regan Jr., his lead is shrinking. It's an interesting thing right now because Bradley Hawley is actually a tenth of a second quicker. Never mind, Richard Regan Jr., the second. Bradley Hawley got within a second, just kicked it back up to equalizing. So, at this point, you can argue Richard Regan Jr. is playing the mind games of, I'm going to save and then go. Yeah, just small differences. Maybe you turned a better corner or you had a better line and it can lead to one or two laps at better speed here. But Regan really is putting on a master class here and with Bradley Holly trying to keep up here. By the way, already just received the clarification involving 
the cause of caution. There was a common theory that was discussed amongst the competitors online involving the truck incident involving our spotter Nick Hunter. Just got confirmation magnets may have been involved. No, there seriously. Racing deal. Very like with a call on that one because you can't do anything with the air. Sometimes the air is a small breeze. Other times you're in a hurricane. And other times you have the vortex theory because it's Texas. Uh, I just watched the whole video on that again. It was very, very, very difficult to sit through. I mean, I'd, on, I'd, on iRacing, I about it's, it. on iRacing, it's not rain. No, it's not. It's about how much space you need to give. If it's yeah. a strong vortex swirl, that means you better give about the size of an RV. Yeah, sometimes, right, you need to. But yeah, I watched the whole video about weather in NASCAR uh, online and on YouTube. And the ending of that video talked about Daryl Waltrip and the Vortex Theory. And it was, uh, it was it was an interesting watch. I'd forgotten about it. Uh, it, it yeah. It's funny that it's become the opposite now in, in the stock car world now. Now the common threat is just bring NASCAR to your town. Then yeah, it'll, it'll rain. rain. Yeah. I'm, I mean, it's happened so many times. Like, correct me if I'm wrong, one of the last times Texas was in town, it, it broke up a drought. Well, I mean, maybe that, but the one that comes to mind that's in Texas, remember the first year that NASCAR ran Coda, it was uh, quite the downpour. Yeah, sometimes Mother Nature just likes to have it rain. Yeah, she does. Of course, no rain in iRacing on the ovals yet. Not sure if it'll ever happen, but sort of. I a mean, they thought. literally just ran a short track race in real life in the rain. <laughs> I'm pretty certain eventually they will relent. Yeah, it'll be a while, I think, before iRacing gets that, you know, said we need to get some more road cars. Um, there, of course, you know, week by week, it feels like they're adding more and more cars to what can support rain. Uh, our next special event in iRacing, the Nurburg 24, currently does not support range AP, but I'm wondering if they might fix that. Now, would, oh, uh, wouldn't, that be, wouldn't that be scary? You know what's scary? My, how about Gagnon hitting the wall? It is not going good for the 14 this run. Remember, he was in the top 10 to start the race, as high as round 5th. And since then, since the pit stops even, he has just gone straight backwards. In fact, he's hit the wall so many times, he's crumpled the right front fender. Yeah, Still at zero X, but it's aero damage that's pushed the hood up. Yeah, that will not help here, by the way. And all kidding aside, you, uh, oh man, as Morgan almost got tapped from behind here by Daniel Knight. Uh, it, at a track like Texas, it's all about speed and aerodynamics. Crumpling up that right front fender will make it for a very long night in that vehicle. Uh, if you do that too often, there's Morgan high side there. And now it comes back down in front of Knight here. Looks like Morgan is Liz losing the car. Oh, it touched the white line and that car wiggled really hard, Justin. Now wiggle. But. Well, racing on here, about 14 minutes left on the clock. A very clean race, JP. A couple bits of contact, but very much caution-free is where we stand. And lots of tight battles up and down the track. It may not all be for the lead, but there's battle for spots anywhere you look in this track right now. Here's 8, 9, 10, 11. It's Lowendick, Loving, Bogue, and Cervantes. Talk about someone who's really fallen back. Ted Lowendick, one point, was almost battling for the lead. Yeah, that's a massive change in the green flag run. 11 seconds, first eight. The difference, Reese Bogue. It's up to ninth. Danny Cervantes is also much so finding a little bit of life late. He dropped back to a run 11 or 12 before pit stops. Now he's up to 10th. Right now, he's starting to pick up the tempo at the end of this run. Yeah, Danny part of Regan Bogue Motorsports. As said, beginning this race, it seems like he's had a lot of gremlins in the past season or so, technical, that really hampers his ability. But, you know, very talented driver and will likely do well once he gets all those kind of gremlins solved or rid of or however you want to state that. But right now, he's currently trying to run down his opponent, Reese Bogue, right here, his teammate, in fact. So you probably don't want to wreck your uh, co-team owner. Yeah, definitely don't want to do that. Oh, by the way, Something that someone doesn't want to do.
pick up multiple bits of damage and a penalty. That's what the birthday boy in the double zero just did. Hit the wall with the right front, came in, said, you know what, I'm taking an extra set of tires, and then proceeded to have a blend line penalty. Oh. So the birthday boy is now serving a 40 second hold that just came to an end. So he did not elect to go for the quick stop and go by unchecking everything in the black boxes. He served the full 40. You know, I got to think, you know, for Nick Byer, maybe we should talk to the admins, get him like a one second penalty for each year old he is on his birthday today and see if it'll help him a little bit. But yeah, there he is. Here's Dalton Geyer, by the way, back in 16th racing with Matt Gagnon. Matt, one of the drivers, is now doing both the third of the Wednesday, pardon me, races and also the Sunday Cup races here. For Piro. By the way, I just noticed on Dalton's car, he's also got the puppy, JP. Look at that on the yes. side of the car as it comes around here. I'm I was about to say, I'm pretty sure that event is in about a week and a half from now, in fact. And I believe he's really struggling with the right front two of the 36s. He is way off the gas. Yeah, that's not having a good time here. Just trying to get that around the track as safely as possible. And look at his lead here. Two and a half seconds between Regan and Bradley Hobby. That's the thing as big as it's been all day. And it feels like ever since the pit stops, Regan just keeps pulling away here with all that clean track in front of him. And a great chance for a bounce back after what's been a blender to start the season, so to speak. Two wins. He did pick up the penalty that seems to start towards the back, and he was able to recover that pretty quickly. We already seen it. Now, so long as it stays green, it seems like it's his race to lose. We said the last race for the trucks, by the way, there was a chance for three for three, and then what did we have happen? The points leader hey, crashed. Hot. I'm not gonna hey, jinx hot. it today. No, we're not going to jinx it at all, and, but here we go. Here, by the way, is another side-by-side -side battle. That's James Morgan and Ted Lowendick. This is for P7 and 8 right here on the track, and it's the 72 and the 12. Morgan's going to try to get the better run through the high line. Going to try to squeeze it down a little bit and see if he can carry the momentum off of that corner. Man, that car just looks sideways at times, doesn't it, JP? It didn't even look like James squeezed. He didn't even need to squeeze with how much Ted's struggling right now. Yeah, you're right. I thought I thought that Morgan was going to squeeze the need to. You're at 10 minutes to go is now where we are, JP. So if anyone's going to make a move, you got to make it happen now. And we're quickly approaching that point of no return here. So you know, if a caution is going to come out, it's going to happen soon or it's going to end the race. Point of return, remember, about four Make it three and a half minutes to go today. Now Morgan having some troubles. Oh. Ted saying, I want a chance. May as well take the run. Why not? Morgan has the high side though and clears out of turn two again. Never mind. Morgan instead nearly hits the wall and scrubs some paint off of it. Yeah, you know, it's, you didn't pay for the paint. Why not, you know, abuse it a little bit. Uh, did that, you pay for the paint? Uh, yeah, yeah, we're going to have a talk about his invoice later. You just up that beautiful red car. I think the red reflects better in the broadcast than the blue that he had for the past couple weeks here, but uh, doing a pre pretty good job here. And, you know, in him, in, you're right, in his mind, he wanted to shake off the past couple weeks. He wanted to put the red on. He wanted to kind of scrub off with the past couple weeks, which he's called mediocre racing for himself. He wasn't happy. So driver superstitions are a weird thing, JP. Sometimes you do oh. weird things. Oh, hello. That's like three or four wall stops right there, James. Yeah, a lot of bouncy bounce. James Morgan able to avoid fender damage at the least, despite all that. And... I was about to say, Knight had ran away from these two. Now he's fallen off himself now. Knight has fallen off a tenth or two in lap, and now it's a three-car battle for sixth. Yeah, what's happening is Knight's moving up and down the lanes and kind of like spooking both drivers a little bit and making it difficult for both of them because, man, Morgan and Knight both, if they didn't scrub the wall, came darn close that time. Dead Loma Dick trying to see if the top line gets the ramp he's looking for. It worked once before. Morgan offset three. That nearly set Ted into the grass. And Morgan now alongside yet again. Time to battle for sixth again. 
This time taking the inside lane on Daniel Knight. And you know what? Driver's having a hard time through a corner. It might be better to push them up high and let them get through a scrub wall and see if you can make a run on it. Lowendick's now going to go back and forth on who he wants to support. I think if Lowendick would get behind Morgan and give that momentum there, they would both clear Daniel Knight pretty quickly. Thing is, Ted's saying, I'm choosing me. He chooses to push Knight. And now, here's the fear. Now you have new challengers. Reese Bogue is quicker than them all. Morgan didn't give a little bit of space there for Knight. Was hoping for some give and take almost to look like for the 17. He didn't get it. Now he gets the spot. Oh, they're almost three wide here. Low and they are. goes way high. Uh-oh. Morgan loose. No. Contact to the grass. He spins it down into the Legends Oval. We stay green for now as Morgan spins it out on the logo. Reese Bogue has broken parts of his car. And we're still green. Yeah, a little bit of unhappiness expressed over the radio involving that incident. Want to see it again before we can really say what happened. It sort of happened uh, both out of nowhere and also not. You can see it sort of forming, but then all of a sudden that car kind of snapped and Morgan, I'm not sure if he got some help or what happened here, but we'll wait and see. And now Daniel Knight up high here and Ted Lovedick has got on by. So James Morgan not able to shake off that bad luck with the paint scheme change. Just six minutes to go. Got loose. No time for checkups. No, no time for checkups indeed. And yep, kind of got bumped there by Daniel Knight. And I think Reese Bogue even got a small part of it as Morgan was going around. And Reese Bogue as a result back to ninth. Morgan has had to come to the pit lane because of the damage. So Morgan, another bad finish in this season. Five and a half minutes to go though, as the 12 comes in to try and fix some of the damages. The battle's still on technically going on because remember Cervantes, he just picked up all the pieces that were just laid around, passed by all the pieces, and now he has a chance for seventh. Yeah, so what I think happened to Morgan there, JP, is I think through all that spinning through the grass, I think his tires barely touched the surface of pit road. And as you and I know across iRacing, iRacing will grant him the penalty for unsafe pit entrance because that was a very, very, very fast stop for Morgan on pit road. So I think it was simply a stop and go for Morgan for unsafe pit entrance. Need to take the tire set at the very minimum though. Cervantes takes the inside and the peak. Point of return, next lap. Looks like the fights, if you want to get the points, come down to this moment. Now they do have fresh tires of Morgan to deal with as well here. It looks like James is going to just take it high, wide, and handsome. Yeah, no need to push anything here. No need to get involved in a battle you're not involved in. This, be patient here. Hey, listen, and unfortunately, we're now at the point with four minutes left where if caution comes out, Morgan would get a lucky dog if he's in that spot, but, you know, can't really benefit from it because I'm sure we will we'll not go green again if that happens. Eight estimated laps to go here. The lead is 3.1 seconds. Still keeping an eye on one of the closer battles here for seventh. Knight still has the run going enough to where it might be difficult to pass him. Cervantes is a touch quicker, but a touch quicker doesn't get you spots. No, what Danny is going to need here is for Daniel Knight to sort of slip up in the corner, either just drift really high or touch the white lane and wiggle the car loose, and then Danny can make it on by. Just based on the raw natural speed of these two drivers, I don't see Danny getting around him without really pushing it somehow. Well, he just pushed it there. Now he's trying to force a mistake from the top of his pump machine. Bit of wiggles, bit of bobbles. Right front tire warning starting to flare up here throughout the field. Will we keep the tires from popping? It's been green the whole race. Knight looking for one of his better runs here with three minutes to go. Oh, by the way, Reese Bug is quicker than these two. He's in the draft. As Cervantes is to the inside, Knight lets him have it. 
Yeah, I think Cervantes has made the move and set it up nicely, and Knight sort of realized... Or he does that, and that, instead of the crossover, is him hitting the apron. Yep. That apron is treacherous here and scary here at Texas. Here's Reese Bogue now to the end. Uh -oh. Knight, hold on. Knight came down as Reese Bogue tried to lay dark. Knight shoves him off like a coat. Reese might have just lost the give and take. Yeah, and I wonder if either one of those drivers has a little bit of front end damage from when James Morgan spun in front of them. And that may make the difference here in who does or doesn't get a spot in these final two minutes here between uh, Knight and Bogue. We'll wait and see how this plays out. But right now, this is great news for Danny Cervantes up in front of them. The more they fight, the more he feels confident in his spot. Can confirm Knight has right front damage. Bogue does not have any damage to the nose. Here comes the run. The four is quicker with the diamond line yet again. Knight tries to cross back. Reese Bogue back to eighth. Pass done, his teammate right in front of him. Down to the final 90 seconds on the night. That's about three laps to go now for these leaders. Also on track, Colton Lane finally gets a run on the 11. Can Lane get a season high top four here? Down to just three laps to go from Texas. Yeah, a couple of memorable moments for Lane tonight. Led a lap earlier throughout the pit cycle, so he's getting a point for that. Trying to battle really hard to the inside here. See how well he tracks out here out of two. Does he track out far enough? I oh, mean, that's so, so much space there, JP. If he wants to make this pass, he's going to track out higher and gain more speed out of that, out of that corner. Didn't even need to track up. Nope, Scruggs. I guess not. Scruggs tries to go for the diamond back. Instead, he just gets the dirty air back across the nose. White flag next time by Colton Lane gets fourth. And now Lane just got a tire warning per the spotter ruling. So now he's got a problem with the tires at the wrong time as the white flag gets ready to wave. Well, at this point, whether it's a warning or not, you don't care. It's one lap to go or two laps to go, maybe. You, you're just going to have to just go for it. You don't care what the warning says. You're just going to run it out and see what happens. You can't care about that now. Scruggs going to try to get to the inside here and make that pass. There's your leader up top. Just had a very awesome day. Drove through the field and has dominated. Scruggs made the pass, though, on Colton Lane. Arnie's already thrown the white. Checker flag and the next flag up. Richard Regan Jr. goes three for three to start the season for the Piero Grand National Series. Richard Regan Jr. wins at Texas. What a run. Great job, Richard Regan, in that 56 machine. Another win to add to the column. And one of the windiest drivers on the global side gets it done. He looks enthused. <laughs> very, very stoic. I like that about Richard. Just that, that works both ways. He also is someone who doesn't get very upset when things go wrong, but sometimes not always the most excited still in his VR headset for the moment. He does it by nearly five seconds tonight. The biggest win margin victory tonight. So the 56 gets to celebrate. He led 65 laps to get to victory lane here tonight. It's a team 1-4 for RBM as well. Richard Regan Jr., three straight victories, and for some reason, Steve Loving is cutting through the grass to join him. Yeah, you know, sometimes you get your own oh. reasons to celebrate. Oh. They are this? teammates, but um, say Windows that was right there. Yeah. I think Windows absolutely just crashed, and it's time to restart the computer. Richard Regan Jr. finishes with the win over Holly at Acosta. Scruggs, Lane, Ted Lowendick, Cervantes, Bogue, Knight, and Loving, a top 10. About four, five top drivers from RBM in the top 10. 11 spot tonight went to Thomas Sink. We haven't mentioned Thomas Sink really since the start, in fact. He's on the next page of drivers, if you flip over. 48 finished in 11th. Adam Zemke, Chris Dean, Dominic Begin finishing in 14th. Gagnon struggled late. He finished 15th. Dutch Geyer, followed by Doug Evans, Nick McLaughlin, amongst those who had some struggles as well. 
Mark Kalen a one lap down with Jeff Evans. Not a great day for what about racing overdrive TNT and back row for some of the drivers. Then two laps down, James Morgan after an incident. Pitt took tires. Didn't mean much in the end. Nick Byer, the birthday boy, finished four laps down after multiple penalties. And Michael Lemieux, who was top 10 in points before tonight, instead parked it. Richard Regan Jr. parks it in victory lane here tonight. Richard, you seem very excited when you cross the line. How's it feel to be three for three? Uh, feels good. Um, yeah, definitely uh, feel feel a lot more excited for this one because I couldn't qualify. Uh, fortunately, with the low car count, that man only starting 14th, but um, still uh, no cautions and how to be smart with how to save tires and pick your way through the field. And I'm glad we were able to get it done. Now, talk to us about the run because we were hearing throughout the field, tire warnings galore about the right front tire. What was the feeling of you with the tires? Some drivers were in the 40s to the 20s at the end of the runs. Yeah, um, personally, I didn't have a tire problem. Uh, I never got the tire warning, so my tires were pretty good after that first run, um, especially considering trying to be a little bit aggressive early on. But um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, Texas is a lot of people don't like Texas because you can't they think you can't pass, but you just got to know how to run a different line than everybody else and how to do different things than everybody else. And you can pretty much do whatever you want, just like any other track. David Egg is next on the docket. How are you and the rest of the RVM folks getting feeling about uh, some racing on some of the big tracks coming up here pretty soon when it comes to Grand National? Yeah, you know, Talladega is uh, Talladega. So uh, hopefully we can have a decent finish. I just don't want to get wrecked there because we, we got um, Road America coming up in a couple weeks and we already know who's going to win that. Um, so, yeah, just, uh, you know, try to have a nice clean race next week. And then um, after that, we go to Dover and that's probably by far my best track. So, um, yeah, uh, hopefully we can continue the momentum going. Once again, congratulations on the victory here tonight. Thank you. I'd like to give a shout out to uh, Mission 22, Neonism Paints. You need to paint, go to facebook.com slash neonism. Tell them the PRL sent you. Um, State Analyzer, Multiple Serosa Society, Jay-Z Photography, everybody at RBM, you guys at Race Spot, and everybody at the PRL. Let's get Richard Regan Jr. gets the victory here tonight. He does it by nearly five seconds on the way to the W. He seemed very enthused, even in the midst of the interview. We do have second place on the docket. The camera's still on top of his head. Bradley Hawley standing by with Derek. Well, Bradley, so first off, you asked me privately, said, hey, I want some feedback on that camera. That camera's pretty freaking cool. I got to say that. Uh, that's uh, <laughs> that was pretty. That's your own little version of the NASCAR helmet cam. Now, first of all, how was it running with that, cam with that camera on your head? Did you notice it at all? Uh, sometimes, um, like when I would have to look around, look at, you know, uh, see how much time was left and whatnot. I could feel it a little bit moving my uh, headset around. But other than that, it didn't really bother me. So it felt like as we were watching through the camera a little bit, really turn two, and I think the exit of both turns, but especially two, really just kind of like gave you fits tonight. We saw you really having a hard time out of the corners. What what could you have done differently, do you think, or if anything? Uh, maybe back off a little bit more. Um, but other than that, not much. I mean, the way this the setup was today was save tire and try to keep it under underneath you and try to keep from getting your tires worn out and overheated. But, you know, uh, Rich did a good job about that tonight, and uh, that's why he was able to get by me. So my partner in the booth tonight, Justin Prince, tells me this is the first time you got the poll on a Wednesday night in two years. That sounds like a long time for you. Yeah, I mean, I have been focusing more on uh, long run pace more than anything than qualifying pace a, a lot. And, you know, sometimes I, I miss it and sometimes I hit it. And today was fortunate day with a bunch of the fast guys getting eols from last week so um i'll take it when i can get it right now there you go well next week is talladega the wild card the joker the unknown the question mark the mystery box whatever you want to call it what's your approach uh you know we'll 
I have to see. You know, it depends on how everybody else is racing, and it's Talladega. It's a lot wider than than uh, than Daytona, so it's it's a different ball game, and you know, I'll have to see how aggressive everybody is. All right, Bradley. Well, great job in tonight, and we'll see you next week. Thank you very much. Once again, that's Bradley Holly coming away second here tonight. Abner Acosta. Now saying Baez, there goes the camera off of his head. Abner Acosta had great long run pace, but also had to come from the very back. Abner, how are you feeling about the top three here tonight? Feels good. Uh, anything after Martinsville feels good. No yellows. Uh, he can just run uh, the whole way through. So yeah, it was fun. Now, Richard Regan Jr. mentioned he had no issues with his tires. A lot of others did have issues. Did you have an issue with the tires? Why or why not? Uh, I don't, I mean, I definitely did. I, I mean, the crew chief told me my tires were cooked like twice. I don't know. I'm pretty sure he had to have gotten a message if he didn't. Uh, I guess that's a good job on him. But um, yeah, I definitely had tires. I mean, the car felt fine. It, it did get super tight. Obviously, on the long runs, and you just have to slow it down. Um, I mean, it wasn't terrible, but uh, there was definitely tire problems. <laughs> For reference, Reagan Jr.'s final lap of 32.5. Most of the field after that, 32.9. Now, yeah. the tough thing about Dega for you with that being next is, well, you're an independent for this series, so who are you going to ha have help from and why? Um, I kind of I kind of like that, to be honest. I... <laughs> Usually when you're with a team, I, I mean, I like team orders and everything and I like working together, but I feel like that also takes the fun out of it sometimes. Uh, I don't really like super speedway racing, so it's just going to be whoever I can help that can help me get to the front. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll do it, but you know, it's just roll of the dice like always. Um, not a big fan of super speedways, only, I only like, like the last 10 laps and that's it, but I'll help whoever I see that can help me get to the front. But we'll see if that strategy works out, Abner. We'll see you next week. All right, guys. Have a good night. That's Abner Acosta coming away with a top three. I like to thank the entire top three for taking the time to speak with us during post-race coverage here on Race Spot. So it's a double dose of Dega next time. 8.30 p.m. is the start of the coverage with the trucks. Fall by Grand National next week, Derek. It should be wild. Four wide should be on the docket at least. <laughs> at least right yeah it's gonna be fun it's gonna be crazy it could be a new surprise winner anything can happen at talladega and you'll see it all happen here on race spot in about a week's time but it's time to say goodbye from texas for my going out to tonight derek watson for our producer and josh lee i'm justin prince saying so long do the rest of your day or evening You've been watching coverage of the PRL Truck and Grand National Series from iRacing's virtual Texas Motor Speedway. We'll see you next week from Lincoln, Alabama.